Okay, we'll begin with uh, Melissa Stevens. I'll tell you all being on opposite sides is it's very disorienting. <laughs> I get used to things left and right. Okay. Larissa, would you Yes, sir. Miss Dudley, would you please announce? Larissa Dudley from Melissa Stevens, twenty CF 152, 21 CF 1638, 22 CF 158. Yeah, I do have a plan sentencing agreement and a score sheet if I may approach. Please. Um, 20 CF 152, Ms. Stevens would admit the violation of probation. And 21 CF 1638, she would enter a plea of no contest and count one would be a lesser included possession with intent to sell or deliver. Count two and three is as charged. And then 22 CF 158, a plea of no contest as charged. She will be sentenced in all cases to one year community control, followed by three years probation. Enter and complete Keaton, if he bars the bed, follow up with any recommended treatment, random your analysis, no drugs or alcohol, 75 hours community service work, and 20 CF 152, it'll be $100 VIP fee, and 21 CF 638, it'll be $940 in court costs, $100 cost prosecution, and 22 CF 158, it will be 515 in court costs and $100 cost of prosecution. These cases and sentence will run concurrent. The state in agreement? Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, and to be time served on any misdemeanors. Very good. Well, this is a downward departure. Yes, sir. Place it on negotiated a plea agreement. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Stevens, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. So you heard the uh, your counsel explain to you the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of the plea agreement? Yes, sir. Uh, also looking at a document titled a sentencing recommendation, it's really a plea and sentencing agreement. And I see that uh, you have signed at the bottom. Uh, it outlines exactly what your attorney just said. I was going through it. Have you gone over this in detail? Because there's some other stuff in here. Have you gone over this agreement with your attorney? You yes, made sir. sure you had all your legal questions answered? You understand that by entering into this plea agreement here today, you're waiving the right to go to a final hearing. Yes, sir. Contest all these charges. Mm -hmm. This is the final resolution of your case. Do you yes, understand sir. that? Have you had all your legal questions answered? Yes, sir. From this? You understand that by entering this, you're going to basically, the bars to bed, that's been explained to you, you're basically going to have to stay in the county jail until we can get Yes, sir. Uh, placement at Keaton. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon uh, the testimony of the defendant as well as the agreement with the state, the court will accept uh, the plea as stated by the defense counsel, the core of which is uh, one year of community control followed by three years of probation and complete Keaton. Bars to bed, follow up with any recommended treatment. So, ma'am, the one thing I would say to you is, I know, you know, we all want to kind of get these things done and, you know, get out of jail, but this ain't the end, this is the beginning. And you just need to be committed to the process because it will take a lot of effort to try and get this. We want you to be successful. Okay. Any questions on this? No, sir. Okay. Very good. Thank you very much. Your Honor, that's all I have. Yes. Thank you very much. Your Honor, that's all I have. May I be excused? Thank you. Thank you. James Spencer.
Your Honor, may I approach? You may. Thank you. <clears throat> Your Honor, Michael Gilbert on behalf of James Spencer in 21 CF 3133. We're here today to make a change of plea from not guilty to no contest. The original charge is count one, uh, cruelty toward child, two, cruelty toward child, and three, domestic uh, violence. Uh, the agreed, uh, the agreement is count one will be dropped. Count two will be the lesser included offense of child abuse, three years probation, anger management, parenting classes, substance abuse evaluation, and any treatment, no alcohol or controlled substances, and no violent contact with twins KS and JS. Court costs of $602, early termination at two years with all requirements complete. And count three, uh, 1129 probation, concurrent, anger management, and no contact with uh, Ms. Keisha Spencer. Your Honor, I'm sorry, I didn't catch this originally when Mr. Gilbert presented me with the written plea agreement. On count two, it says a lesser included of child abuse. It is as charged child abuse. That was the intent, the third degree felony. So just the LIO, LIO comes off, it's as charged. No objection, Your Honor. And we are announcing an all pass in count one. Very good. Mr. Gilbert, would you come up and make that change in this one? So Mr. Spencer, would you please raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. The state's in agreement except with that one change? Yes, Your Honor. It is as charged, and that, that was, was reflected. And the state's in agreement on the score sheet as yes, well? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. It re reflects 36.2 points. Very good. Mr. Spencer, you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement? Yes. And I also am looking at a plea and sentencing agreement that has your <coughs> has your signature, what appears to be your signature yes. affixed to it. Have you gone over this plea and sentencing agreement and the terms of the plea agreement in detail with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Do you understand the terms of the plea agreement? Yes, Your Honor. You understand that by entering into this plea agreement, you're waiving the right to go to a trial on all these cases? Yes, Your Honor. One of the one of your charges is is being dismissed by the state as a part of this plea agreement, but the other two, uh, uh, cruelty toward child, um, and the domestic violence battery, those are both. Um, you're both entering a no contest plea, which is kind of a half brother to a guilty plea. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. You understand that the. Uh, three years probation, the terms of this, if you don't complete this, the terms of this probation, you could come back and face a jail sentence. Do you understand that? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. And you've had it gone over. Have you, what's the status of the parenting classes and have you already gotten the substance abuse evaluation? Where are we at with all that? I'm actually currently in a substance abuse program okay. and I have to wait to see what probation says because whether they'll accept online on the parenting and the anger management and everything, or whether it needs to be in person, and that way I can get it scheduled. Okay. I need state and the council to come forward for just a second.
Jabari Amani. Good morning, Your Honor. Cheryl Gooden with Muska Law Firm for Jabari Amani. We're here today on a motion for bond. The only witness I have is my client. Okay. Very good. Would you please raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. State your full name for the record. Jabari Chervani, Mani. Pull that mic up to you so I can hear you good. It's a little hard. This is a kind of a, it's not good sound in this courtroom. Jabari Chervani, Mani. And Mr. Omani, where where do you live? Crestview, Florida. How long have you lived there? A couple of years. And who do you live with? Mom. I'm sorry? Currently not mom. Your mother? Yes. And are you employed? Yes, ma'am. Where are you employed at? I have a construction job. And do you have any dependents or children? No, ma'am. Okay. And how many days a week do you work? Five. Okay. Um, on this case, we're asking the court to establish a bond. Um, can you? How much bond can you afford? Mm. Any anything reasonable? Okay. Are you willing to do an ankle monitor? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And as as far as probation, you were just recently placed on probation, but there's a violation. You understand that? Yes, ma'am. And you understand you're not entitled to a bond. You're asking the court to give you a bond in this case? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And you have some other matters that you need to take care of legally? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Which are also a basis for this violation correct yes ma'am okay is there anything else you want the court to know uh, before he makes his decision just trying to better myself and finish school oh i'm sorry and and you're enrolled in school i yes, forgot and what kind of school are you enrolled in otc technical college and when does that begin when does it begin? When do, when do you go, when do you start school? I'm already in school, like I go every day. Oh, so you're in school? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So you're missing school now? Yes, ma'am. Okay. No further questions, Your Honor. State have any questions? Not for the defendant, Judge. Your Honor, we understand in a violation of probation, my client not. I understand that there are some new law violations which we deny. We do admit that we permission, which is a technical violation, um, is in school. He is gainfully employed, asking, and he does have some other matters that he needs to take care of. We're asking the court to consider a bond even possibly a GPI. State's position. Judge, the state would ask that the defendant be continued to be held without bond. This is a violation of probation. He was just placed on probation January 3rd, 2022. February 9th, 2022, about a month later, he's arrested in Gadsden County where he's a passenger in a vehicle stopped on I-10. A trooper saw the defendant throw a bag out of the window that held a little over 10 grams of marijuana, an additional bag with uh, additional marijuana, a scale, and numerous baggies were found in a bag at his feet. He's also charged with a handgun stolen out of Okaloosa County that was also thrown from the passenger window. Two days later... Is that he, part of the charges? I only have possession of a controlled substance. Is there... Um, let's see. No. There, uh, in the... Addendum violation of probation report. The 12 conditions include possession of marijuana over 20 grams, evidence tampering, two counts, carrying a concealed weapon, possession of a weapon by a Florida delinquent, possession of ammunition by a Florida delinquent, 
use or display of a firearm during a felony, possession of marijuana with intent to sell, possession of drug paraphernalia, failure to abstain from drugs, um, possession of a weapon, and then being out of county without permission. One that's supposed to be out of Oklahoma County. So two days He's later, after he was released from the Gadsden County Jail, he didn't report to probation. He never reported again. After that, uh, the probation officer tried to find him, was unable to find him because he had been evicted from his residence for rental violation policies, but never followed up with state probation on his new address. So they weren't able to find him. Um, although he's announced today that he is employed, that's not the information that he gave state probation. They had him listed as unemployed. And he, in March, uh, so two months after he's put on probation, once he's stopped reporting to probation, he is a rear passenger who runs from a traffic stop while he's got the active uh, felony warrant at the time and is arrested for a resisting case here in Opelousa. Uh, he has a substantial juvenile history with numerous felony juvenile um, charges, and based on that, the state believes that no bond is appropriate. Give you the final word, Ms. Good. Your Honor, as far as the new law allegations, he is intending to litigate those charges as far as the county without permission. We, we ask that he given the opportunity to have the bond to do school, to do work, and to continue on. And the court certainly supports that. Unfortunately, there's been a lot of other activity, including issues involving firearms. And the uh, court's not required to, and I, I think at this point the safest thing for for uh, Mr. Romani as well as the, the community is going to be to let him sit for a while and see if we can get this resolved and figure out where we're going on the big picture because there's a number of issues uh, which the state informed me of that not part of the original violation but has now been added in, as an amended. So it's going to deny at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much. Katarina Barantine. I'm sorry. Okay. I'm sorry. You're ready? Yes, okay. Your Honor, we've had an opportunity to speak and adjust the agreement. Okay. May I approach your Honor? You may. And Your Honor, the state would announce on the record that count three will be to simple battery, and we okay. have so noted on the plea agreement. Okay. Very good. Okay, so I was in the middle of just inquiring. There was some discussion, I know, with the, with counsel in the state regarding the uh, anger management as an appropriate uh, uh, issue, and so with the with the change in the uh, the charge to simple battery, it, it appears to be in order. So. Uh, uh, at this point, you understand that by finalizing this today, you're making a final resolution. Yes, you had all your questions answered, so you understand what you're doing. This is a free and voluntary yes, plea right. here today. <clears throat> Very good. Do you have any questions regarding the various uh, services that are required of this probation? Yeah. You understand that if you fail to comply with those, you're going to end up coming back into court and could end up facing time? Yes, yeah, sure. You understand that? Okay. Based upon that, the court will accept this plea agreement as uh, as written in the plea and sentencing agreement. There was a minor change, well, not a minor change. It was a change in in the actual charge to simple battery versus domestic violence. Uh, similar, but but uh, does have some substantive uh, differences. So the court will accept that change, and uh, they'll be uh, sentenced to three years of probation along with the other services that are required and the costs that are contained in there. Very good. Any other questions? No, Your Honor. Okay. Thank you very much. We would like to just reiterate for Mr. Spencer's, on Mr. Spencer's knowledge that the no contact order with the adult is a no contact whatsoever as opposed to the no violent, which is with... Okay. 
Okay. Do you understand yes. that? What's the situation? The, the twins, is it, uh, is, is Miss Spencer, is it the twins her twins? The twins? They're adopted. They oh, okay. They're adopted out. They're my mother's. Do you understand the no contact? Yes. Okay. That means that it's a one-sided contact. Even if she contacts you, if you run into her in public, it's your obligation to recede. Do you understand that? Your Honor, I've sold my home and we are moving out of the county. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Very good. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Honor, from a probation standpoint, can I get the, uh, the initials of the children? Yes. I can go get them from there on that okay. slide. Okay. Just want to make sure that no, no, that's, that's, very, that's very important. You need to check in, particularly, is, is this being coordinated, Mr. Barry, with him moving out of the area? As far as probation, you already? Yes. It'd be a simple transfer, Your Honor. Okay, very good. Can we ask the supervision these people? Yes, so ordered. Okay. Call ahead, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Shannon Beck. Just come forward, Mr. Beck. Sir. Would the state go ahead and announce? Mr. Beck is before the court on 21 CF2000. He's here on violation of probation. Okay. His offer is he's no reason. Okay. So, Mr. Beck. Uh, at this point, you do not have an attorney appointed. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to, I'll have them reiterate their, their uh, plea offer. But normally what the court would do, and uh, this goes for Mr. Roberts, who's right behind me, is both you all are charged with the violations of probation, and neither one of you have an attorney. Yes, sir. You have the right to have an attorney present. That's an important right. So you yes, understand sir. exactly you know, particularly when you're negotiating a plea agreement, um, it's important you have legal counsel. It's always important in criminal matters to have legal counsel. Yes, sir. So uh, if you cannot afford one, the court will appoint one today. I don't, normally what I would do is enter a denial where you don't give up any rights, appoint an attorney, give you an opportunity to speak with that attorney, come back. Obviously the state's making a plea offer. Um, allows you to negotiate appropriately with them, attorney to attorney. Is that something you'd be interested in doing, or are you uh, wanting to listen to their plea offer here today without benefit of counsel? Well, they said counsel? 10 days jail time, time served, so I'd just be placed back on probation. Yes. Yeah. I mean, because it was just my, I mean, just to explain, when she come to check on me, I was home, but she's supposed to have visual contact. But yeah, and the charger thing on my don't box. don't 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 say anything about it because I don't okay. want you to I, yes sir I don't want you to to possibly say something that would hurt your case yes sir yes sir they're yes, making the sir. offer I, I, they I, I, understand I, what's going <laughs> on that's fine you're welcome to talk privately I just don't want you to do an open court because yes, I have sir. to put you under oath yes sir that's fine okay, I'll, so. I'll accept that ten days and time served and be back on probation okay. that's fine so he's already served the ten days is that Okay, so Mr. Beck, would you raise your right hand? Let me swear you in. I, and I ask you a couple questions. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court as the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay, so you've been charged with violation of probation. The state has made you an offer, and are you uh, 10 days in the, in the county jail? You would get credit for time served. I don't know how much time you've already had where you've served. Were you arrested in... Yes, sir. I did like two days or something like that okay. in there. Well, so. you would get credit for that, but it would be 10 days in the county jail total. Do you understand that? Yeah, well, I don't want to accept that if I'm going to have to go to jail. Okay. <laughs> so the, 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 the deal that's being offered is 10 days. See, that's why it's important to have yes, an sir. attorney. To make yes, sure sir. Of. Would you like to have an attorney appointed and meet deny yes, this so that you can yes, talk sir, with I your would. attorney? Court will... Um, appoint you an attorney and enter a, a denial at this point. 
Matter of fact, you may even get a chance to chat with them in the break, and if you can figure something out, you can come back. But we'll come back yes, sir. on uh, uh, April 28th in the morning. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Darius Roberts. Mr. Mr. Roberts is here for a violation of probation. At this time, I would the violation of probation and terminate his remaining two. Okay. Very good. So probation will be uh, revoked and dismissed the violation, so everything goes away. Mr. Barry? Uh, Your Honor, uh, on that collection thing, if we could hold off on that for a minute. He paid the money. Yes. Uh, but it's through a JPay system. Yes, sir. And it takes, uh, I don't know, five days for it to disperse out. So if the clerk put it to collections today or tomorrow because they don't have their money, I think it would be unfair to him. <clears throat> okay. What would be, how, how would, what's the best way to navigate that? Uh, you can put it to collections after 90 days. Okay. But, uh, I mean, it, we do have the money. Okay. No, no, no. That's good. I just didn't know procedurally how we could navigate uh -huh. so that you you understand with the discussion what's going on. The, yes, your probation officer wants to make sure you get credit for the money you've already paid, but yes, it takes a little while to work its way through the system to where you get credit for it. You know, that's the way it is with government. When government, when you owe the government money, they they immediately want it. But if if it's a credit or something, it usually takes a few days. So that's just the way it is. But we'll dismiss the probation. Technically, we're uh, sending it to collection after 90 days, but you've already paid, and it's going to go through the system. So you'll be in good shape. Okay, anything else, Mr. Barry? Thank you for raising that. Okay. Do you have any questions? No, sir. Okay. Thank you very much. Justin Mulford. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office. This is Justin Mulford, Judge. Uh, case number is 21 CF 1641. It's a felony violation of probation uh, based on a new misdemeanor case that's still pending. Uh, from talking to the misdemeanor public defender, uh, they intend to contest those charges, so we would need to put this case off to see what happens on that one. Okay. So you wish to enter a denial here today? At this time, Judge. And how far out do we want to... You want to go do the the May 26th? I think that would be best, Judge. Okay. So we'll come back in the morning without... Uh, that one off to, get, to take care of it. Without subpoenas in the morning on May 26th. Thank you very much. Lydia Odom. Judge, I don't think she's made it to court yet. Can we pass it till the end of the docket? It, it, what's, what's a, this is a motion to withdraw KPS for failure to appear. <laughs> so I would object to that and ask that we call it now at this time. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna to call the case. Okay. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office. This is Lydia Odom, case number 21CF2030. As the state stated, th that's correct. This is on a defense motion to withdraw Capius because she missed a court date before. Capius is still outstanding. She's not here, so I guess I would withdraw my motion. Okay. Thank you very much. Adam Parkinson. Parkinson. Charles Russell, Public Defender's Office. <coughs> this is Adam Parkinson, Judge. Case number is 2017 CF 3022. Um, there is a 60-month suspended off suspended DOC sentence in this case. So at this time, we're asking um, to continue the case. Without objection, Your Honor. Would you like to set that with uh, subpoenas next time? We can. Just um, we would like some time. So May 26. So May 26 in the afternoon. 
that'll work, Judge. With subpoenas. Very good. Thank you. Ryan Peterson. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office. Uh, Ryan Peterson is approaching, Judge. This is case number 20, CF1288. Uh, Mr. Peterson is before the court on a violation of probation. Um, the state's offer is some county jail time, and Mr. Peterson is considering that, but he needs some time to get his affairs in order, make arrangements for his family so he can go back into jail because he doesn't have the credit. Um, so we're asking for a continuance today. You want to, can we do it on the 28th? Is that in the morning? Is that sufficient time? We can either do it there or May 26th. On the third, to the council, Judge. We'd ask for May 26th, 9 o'clock, Judge. Okay. May 26th in the morning without subpoenas. Jerome White. The state announcer. Judge, this is 22 CF 66. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office. Uh, this is Jerome Michael White, Judge. We have reached a plea agreement in this case. Um, and we have another issue to take care of too. Previously, the court had issued an order revoking bond and commanding arrest because pretrial services filed an affidavit stating that he was not complying. So in exchange, um, we would ask, since he's gonna go ahead and plead out to the charges today, that the court withdraw that order uh, and not command his arrest. And then I have a plea agreement, a score sheet, if I may approach. You may. And I have no objection to the court recalling that. Very good. The court. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, Mr. White is currently charged with a sexual battery. He's going to plead to a lesser included offense of felony battery. Uh, he's pleading no contest. Adjudication is going to be withheld. He will be put on 36 months of probation. The cost of supervision will be waived. Uh, he will pay uh, standard court costs, $100 cost <coughs> of prosecution, $150 uh, public defender fee, perform 25 hours of community service with the option to buy that out. Uh, he has to have no contact with the victim in this case, except uh, regarding any discussions, any discussions regarding their child. Um, he's to not trespass at the Fairfield Inn and Suites, 110 Crossan Street in Crestview, and he is to complete the batter's intervention program. Council approach. Yes, sir. And judge, for the record, the victim was in agreement with this offer, and she um, did approve and want this offer to be extended. Okay. We don't have to approach. That was, that was my question. She also did not want to make a statement here today, Judge. Okay. So the one thing that, that I think uh, we need to make sure we understand, because I'm not clear about it, the no contact with the victim except regarding their child. I understand what that, what does that mean technically? Does that mean that it allows telephone contact regarding the children? That any type of contact, in other words, in-person contact is allowed so long as the only discussion is with the children? That's going to be exceptionally hard to enforce. And I'm just trying to make sure what I want is I want this plea agreement to be clear so you don't get caught up in some technicality. Well, I didn't realize that and somebody else, in, you know, hooking you up in handcuffs because you violated your probation. Judge, I talked to Mr. White. If the court wants to just make it no contact with the victim, period, delete the accept regarding their child, he's okay with that. Well, uh, the, uh, and the other thing we can do is accept contact with the, the victim by telephone. In other words, by, you know, not in person. I'm okay with that. You'd rather have no contact? Contact. I'm okay. That's fine. No contact with the victim. Do I need to change that, Judge? Yes, sir. Okay. Is 
So, Mr. White, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so I help you, God? Yes, sir. I just want to make sure that you understand your plea. It's free and voluntary. Yes, sir. So, you heard the, the terms of the plea agreement. There's a lesser included charge of felony battery, adjudication withheld, 36 months probation. That's the, that's the core, waive the cost of supervision, court costs, etc. So you've got other things, but do you understand the terms of this? Have you gone over it with your attorney? You know, I see that you've signed the plea and sentencing agreement. You've gone over all the, the different terms that are, that are in this. Sir. Do you have any legal questions of your attorney regarding this plea agreement? Have you had all your questions answered? The state in agreement on the score sheet. Yes, Your Honor. Judge, could I have a moment to talk to sure. probation? I was able to answer his questions, Judge. You understand that <clears throat> the no trespass at the Fairfield Inn and Suites, you understand that? That's an important one. Don't go around <laughs> that at all. They'll violate you in New York second, as they say. Okay? Aye. Okay. Any other questions regarding this plea and sentencing agreement? Okay. Based upon your testimony here today, the court will accept the plea and sentencing agreement sends you withhold adjudication sends you to 36 months probation as well as the other terms and conditions contained in your plea and sentencing agreement waive cost of supervision make sure you check in with probation okay. thank you your honor just as, yes just so the court's aware as far as the community service work yes sir based on his charge it might be difficult to find a place for him right i don't have an objection to him buying out the <coughs> hours. okay and is that at dollars an hour? I think it is ten. I think it is ten dollars an hour. Okay, ten dollars an hour. The only other thing, Judge, yes, is, is the court vacating the order revoking. Yes, the thank you very much for making that clear. Okay, thank you, Judge. We'll revoke that. All right, appreciate you. Deborah Allen. approach okay. okay very good okay I'm gonna go ahead and announce counsel yes sir David Snell on behalf of Miss Allen your honor she's before the court 2020 CF 2199 this time she's gonna withdraw her previously entered plea and enter a no contest plea your honor well, that's actually an admission to the violation being adjudication of guilt 180 days in the county jail she get credit for time served should be ordered to pay three hundred fifty two dollars and ninety two cents as cost of transportation hundred dollars for a cost of prosecution and hundred and fifty dollars for cost of defense and all the costs would be sent to collections that stated in agreement it is and we also agree with the score sheet judge thank you very much Ms. Allen, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay. Do 
So, Ms. Allen, you heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement on this violation of probation. Is that what you're agreeing to here today? Is that yes. your understanding yes, of it? And I see, speaking to that mic for me, because I, oh, yes, I want to make, I have to make sure you understand what you're doing, and it's free and voluntary. That's why I'm asking you these questions. So I see you've signed, you signed a the plea and sentencing agreement. Yes. Have you gone over it with your attorney? Make sure you got all your legal questions answered. Yes. Importantly, this this will uh, uh, result in the adjudication of guilt it's an admission of the violation. 180 days in the county jail. Yes, sir. You will get credit for time served for all the time you've already been in since the arrest. Uh, you will uh, also be charged with obviously some of the the costs that were outlined. You in agreement with all those? I am. And you understand that by entering this, this is a final resolution. You're not going to go to any more hearings. And when you get after the 180 days, no further probation, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. So you understand all that, ma'am? I do. Okay. Your, your acceptance of this is free and voluntary. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. The court will accept the plea and sentencing agreement and sentence. Okay. 180 days in the county jail with adjudication of guilt and the other two, the other provisions that are contained in the plea and sentencing agreement. Yes, sir. Okay. I have Thank you very much. In today. Thank you. Brittany Bromstead. Your Honor, it's going to be a change of plea. David Snell for Ms. Bromstedt, Your Honor, 2022 CF 574, 22 CF 591, 22 MM 187, 21 MM 4725. This time she's going to plead no contest. As to 2022 CF 574 and 591, she'll be ordered to pay $515 in court costs. $100 for a cost of prosecution, $100 cost of defense, six months in Okaloosa County Jail with credit for time served, be concurrent. That's to 22MM187, be $270 in court cost. The court would waive the fine to be ordered to serve 60 days in the Okaloosa County Jail with credit for time served, and that would run concurrent as well. As to four, uh, 2021 MM 4725 be $270 in court cost. The fine would be waived, be a $50 public defender fee, and six months in the county jail concurrent with credit for time served. And there'd be an adjudication on those charges, Your Honor. Very good. State in agreement? Yes, sir, and we also agree with the score sheet. Ms. Bromstead, <clears throat> would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay. Ms. Bromstead, you heard uh, your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement in, in detail, and I'm looking at a plea and sentencing agreement that appears to reflect exactly the the plea agreement that and sentencing agreement that your attorney just stated. Are you in agreement with this? Yes, sir. And importantly, I see you've, your signature is affixed to the end of this plea and sentencing agreement. 
Have you gone over this plea and sentencing agreement in detail with your attorney? Made sure you got all your legal questions answered about it? Yes, sir. Because importantly, you're waiving the right, you're waiving some valuable legal rights by entering into this. The right to go to a trial, confront witnesses, all that, uh, you know, constitutional 101. Okay, you're waiving those rights, but that's important. I want to make sure you're doing it, you know, uh, of your own volition. Yes, so. sir. So you, you had all your legal questions answered of this? Yes, sir. The core of this, obviously, is the six months in the county jail, and then it, one of your counts, 60 days. All of these will be served concurrent. So in other words, they're all kind of running, running parallel to each other, not stacked on top of each other. You understand that? That's a good thing for you. Okay. You, you also have a number of, uh, of uh, cost and fees that are outlined in this, and you understand. So are, are, um, what's the, uh, the payment schedule for these? It would be 90 days after she gets out, then go to collections? What, what, that would be fine. Do we need to... Okay. I, mean, I don't want to... I mean, just want to make... It wasn't... It's not <coughs> listed here. I just want to make sure I'll probably ask you to notate it just to make sure that we get that. Very good. So do you have any questions, ma'am? No, sir. Thank you. Okay. Very good. The court, based upon your testimony, will accept the plea and sentencing agreement as stated and as contained in the plea and sentencing agreement, core of which is the six months. Would you just put Thank that you. in there? Joseph Johnson. Watch him close, counsel. No, just...
13, if I'm okay. not mistaken. I just okay. want to make sure we have it for the record. I do. When I was looking at yours, it said 11 and 12, so I assumed it was. So maybe if it, whatever the count numbers are, we want to make sure and include all of them. So there's also proceed just so you understand procedural and what we were talking about here. Uh, procedurally, there, there's some discussion that some, some of the matters may be able to be dealt with on the record. In other words, what actually occurred in reviewing the record where we don't have to have live testimony. So what I've instructed the uh, defense and the state to do is to really review those as and potentially you're going to be in the middle of that and as far as your attorney will keep, keep you informed of what's going on. Potentially, uh, some of the counts would be able to be dealt with on the record, in which case there would be the record would be presented. It would basically be done uh, in a written form rather than uh, uh, it would not require the need for additional testimony. So once we figure out what those are, then what we're going to do is we're going to come back on May 26th and we're going to have a, a final status conference on this. And at that time, we're going to set the final hearing. Might be a month or two out from there, but it'll, it'll be not going to be way far out. It's going to be, we're going to be, we're going to, we're going to get, um, get to a final hearing on your, on your motion. It's complicated though, so it can't be done, as you know. It's complicated, which is why it's taking this long, but we're going to make sure to get to a final resolution so you get your day in court on your motion. That's, that's important. Okay. Question? Uh, other than I just give uh, Mr. Snell, Mr. Snell uh, a notice of a voluntary dismissal for, uh, I noticed last time you told, you said that there was a number of pro se filings and I was looking at the docket and I realized that Two of those motions are irrelevant. The motion, motion for to rescind cost, I would I would dismiss that. Okay. And well, the, any of those things we can do. We don't have to deal with that today in open court. Just you know, if there's anything that's going to be withdrawn, just let the record reflect. Not the record, but if you'll just fi make a filing on it, we'll we'll withdraw. And I appreciate you doing that. What we want to do is focus on the real issues. Right. If you feel there's legitimate issues. We need to address those, and you know, and so that that's the folks. So I appreciate you withdrawing those and being on top. I know you put a lot of your own energy into it as well, uh, but we'll make sure that we uh, get some resolution on this case one way or another. Okay, thank so, you very much. So we're we're coming back on a status on May 26th. That'll be in the morning, Madam Clerk. Thank you very much. Thank you. James King. David Snell for James King. King, it's uh, 2021 CF 2150, 2022 MM 315, and 2022 MM 235. He's going to enter a plea, Your Honor, to those charges. First one's a VOP on the felony, on the felony battery. It's uh, being adjudication. His probation will be revoked and terminated. He sent us to 18.8 .8 months Department of Corrections, $100 cost of prosecution, $150 PD fee, to 22MM315, be $622 in court cost. Court would waive the fine, be sentenced to 180 days in the county jail concurrent. Court would reserve restitution for 60 days, and he's to have no contact with the alleged victim. And as to 22MM235, it would be $270 in court costs. The fine would be waived. He sentenced to 60 days in Okaloosa County Jail. And, of course, he'd be given credit for time served on these charges. 
Is the state in agreement? Yes, sir, and also with the score sheet. Very good. Mr. King, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Yes, sir. Okay, Mr. King, you've heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement. <clears throat> I'm also looking at a plea and sentencing, a written plea and sentencing agreement that has your has your signature on the end of it. <clears throat> yes. Is that your signature? Yes, sir. And have you gone over this plea and sentencing agreement closely with your attorney? Yes, sir. Have you had all of your legal questions answered about this plea agreement that you're entering into here today? Yes, sir. You understand that by entering into this plea agreement, you're making a final resolution of all of your three cases. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. You're giving up some valuable legal rights, the right to go to a trial, confront witnesses, and all those very important constitutional rights. You're waiving those in order to enter into this plea agreement here today. Yes, sir. You believe it's in your best interest to do so? Yes, sir. I do see that the 18.8 months in the Department of Corrections, um, you will get credit for time served. Yes, sir. And that is actually the 18.8 is the lowest, uh, the minimum amount on, from the score sheet. You, you go over that with your attorney, I'm sure. And the maximum on your VOP on the felony battery, the maximum incarceration is five years and then on the other two charges, 1129. So uh, the plea agreement here today is substantially less than that. You will have your probation revoked and terminated. So when you get out, well, you have to go back on probation. If you get out, you clean slate. Okay. So there are a number of uh, other issues involved with this. No contact with the victim. Who is the victim? We need to put that in here. Or who's the victim? Judge, that condition can be deleted at, since it's an incarcerative sentence. Okay, that's true. Okay. So I'll have you just scratch through it here in a second. So there'll be reservation of restitution for 60 days. Yes, sir. So the state will. Uh, the state will. Um, either file something if they file something reservation doesn't mean either way it means that they have the right to file something in which case you'd have the right to defend it at that point they're just reserving on that do you understand that yes sir okay and you've got some f fees and, and attorneys fees etc that were announced are those all things you gone went over with your attorney you understand those yes sir very good so this Nobody threaten or coerce you to get you to enter into this plea? No, sir. Anybody promise you anything other than what's contained in this plea agreement? No, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea agreement and uh, sentence you here today to 18.8 months in the Department of Corrections, credit for time served, then your probation will be revoked and terminated. Thank you, the, sir. Uh, the other two, 180 days in the county jail and 60 days in the county jail, those will all be uh, served concurrent, so they won't be added on. They'll be served concurrent. Okay, okay. thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Yes. No contact. Part. And your honor, the outstanding money. Yes, sir. Thank you. Sarah Swick. Thank you, counsel. Charles Russell Public Defender's Office. Judge, this is Sarah Whitney Swick. Case numbers are 21 CF 2006, 21 CF 2007, 21 CF 2213, 18 CF 2784, 18 CF 3132, 19 CF 2978, and 20 CF 2543.
and I have um, an original plea agreement that I can let the court read along, and then I have a copy that I can read into the record. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So on, uh, and basically, essentially, what the sentence is going to be is um, two years community control followed by two years probation, complete Phoenix House program, bars to bed, but I'm going to read the specifics. In case numbers um, 21 CF 2006 and 21 CF 2007, Ms. Swick is uh, pleading no contest as charged. In 21 CF 2213, uh, on count one, which is presently a burglary, she's going to plead to a lesser included offense of a trespass, which is a first degree misdemeanor, and as charged on count two. And then on the violations of probation, which are the um, 18 CF 2784, 18 CF 3132, 19 CF 2978, and 20 CF 2543, she's going to admit those violations of probation. And 21 CF 2006, 21 CF 2007, 21 CF 2213. It's going to be an adjudication on all counts. On all the felony counts, she's going to be sentenced to 24 months of community control, followed by 24 months of probation concurrent to uh, each other. In other words, the counts are going to run concurrently and to any other cases, which is going to include the VOPs. The cost of supervision will be waived. She's going to pay $515 in court costs on each case, $150 PD fee on 21 CF 2006, and then $100 PD fee on the other two cases, $100 cost of prosecution on each case. She will have a substance abuse evaluation and treatment with random urinalysis. She will successfully enter and complete the Phoenix House program bars to bed, and she has been approved and she would get time served on any misdemeanors in those cases. In the violation of probation cases, which are 2018 CF 2784, 2018 CF 3132, 19 CF 2978, and 20 CF 2543, her probation is going to be modified to include new terms as well as any original uh, uncompleted conditions. On, on any felony counts in those cases, she will get 24 months, her probation will be modified to 24 months community control, followed by 24 months probation, concurrent to each other and to any other cases. Cost of supervision is waived, $100 PD fee on each case, $100 cost of prosecution on each case, substance abuse evaluation and treatment with random urinalysis, and successfully enter and complete the Phoenix House program bars to bed. Do note that the uh, the downward departure. Yes, sir. And what's the basis for it? Just for the record, Judge, it, it's an uncoerced plea bargain, but the main goal is to get rehabilitation and things. Swick, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. You heard the state attorney, what she just said. Yes, sir. And, uh, and that is certainly, certainly the case here. have to remind you that there are a number of maximum incarceration on these charges yes, sir. is substantial and there's significant accommodation trying to get you into this program I know everybody's happy to be getting out of jail 24 months community control and 24 months probation 
and with Phoenix House, that, that's, that's just the beginning. You know, we're not, this isn't the end here. To, to overcome this, there are going to be challenges. Are you willing? Are you willing to able to do this? Did anybody uh, promise you anything other than what's contained in this plea agreement? Did you go over this plea agreement? It's obviously, like I say, I mean, I'm, I don't have to say it on the record, but it's it's a generous plea offer. Yeah. They're trying to trying to get to the root cause of this, right? But if not. You know, four years. Four years. You're going to have to train. Maybe do a little bit early if you can continue go through these program and whatnot. Get on, be a new, new phase, be a new start. There are a substantial amount of fees and costs in these. I, I note that. I assume. How, how are we going to handle those as far as to collections? After what point? What what? Uh, we would just ask payable during probation, Judge, and then we can deal with it. If we get to the end of probation, she can't pay it. We'll waive the cost of supervision. Any Anything else from probation standpoint on this? Any uh, questions? We run off of a 1990 DOS system over at the state probation office. I'm sorry, say that again? <laughs> we operate off an old DOS system on our computers at the state probation office. I, I'm sorry to hear that, Mr. Yes. I can help if I, it would help us greatly if we just revoked her old probation and gave her two years community control followed by two years probation on everything and we can load it up all at one time. It would be the same sentence. We're just revoking the old probation and putting her back on two years probation. I, I'm sorry, two years community control followed by two years probation. Is the state okay with that? Yes, sir. That's fine with the state. That would collect the... Uh, the termination dates, the start dates, the termination dates that we have to manually adjust. Instead of modifying it, we can just terminate and start <laughs> okay. fresh. Thank you, Your And I talked to Ms. Swick about that, Judge, and she's okay with that. Okay. Just try sometimes keeping it simpler is the uh, is, uh, support is a much better proposition. So, ma'am, you, you do understand that you're waiving the right to go to a trial on yes, all sir. this? Very good. The court will accept your plea, and uh, I'm going to ask that you uh, revise this, uh, the plea agreement, to reflect that it's uh, revoking the current probation and mm -hmm. placing her on a new 24 months of uh, community control followed by 24 months of probation on all these charges. And if it's okay with everybody, what I'm going to do is strike out the language that says probation modified to include new terms as well as original conditions, and then add on where it says followed by 24 months probation to include original new terms. How long have you been in, in the county jail? Um, eight and a half months. Well, sometimes that's a, a forced dry out period. I needed it. You look clear eyed and I think you're willing to begin this uh, new challenge, but it is a challenge. Just understand it's one thing I've come to understand is that these programs, they give you a lot, but it's got to start inside you. It's got to start in. It's got to start with your, you know, commitment. It's, it's not easy, but it can be life changing. Good luck, man. Thank you. Thank you, Josh.
Okay. The only other one we have before we um, handle uh, Mr. Motts is uh, is Barantine with Mr. Keach. Is he? Is he? Would you announce, sir? Judge, we're here in the state of Florida versus Katharina Barentine. She's on the felony docket for a motion to set bond. However, if the court would be so inclined to accept a, a plea on the violation of probation orally and incorporate a misdemeanor case uh, and accept jurisdiction over that, we can resolve both cases today. I, I don't have, I mean, I'm always open to resolving cases. Can we? Uh... The misdemeanor case number would be 22MM954. Do we have a plea, a, a VOP agreement? Why don't we do this? We have, a, we have an agreement on the terms. If, if the court wants me to draft it, I can bring her back on the 28th. It won't I mean it's, it's because it's going to be a county jail sentence. It won't affect her sentence in any way, shape, or form. It's up to you. I, I don't have a. I'm going to take a short break to uh, before we come back with my. We can do that. You can fill it out. And we can do it at the be in ten or fifteen minutes. Get that's it fine. done today. Yes, sir. Let's if, do that. If, if that's if that works for you all, why don't we just do that? That'd be fine. All right. So we'll we'll come back. We we need to take a short morning break anyway before okay. we deal with Mr. Ma. Is was there another one, Mr. Russell? I have a couple things I could deal with, Judge. If you want to do it now or after the break, either one's fine with me. I'll be glad to do it now, but I still we'll still take a short break. Lydia Odom, Ms. Odom showed up, Judge. Okay. This was the case I had filed a motion to withdraw Capius. Uh, my motion sets out the basis. She was a p scheduled to appear in court on February 28th. Based on my conversations with her, um, she did not understand that she had to be in court that day, so she did not appear. A Capius was issued for her arrest. She is here today. We would be asking that the court, if I can reinstate my motion, we would be asking the court to withdraw that capius and then put us on the June docket. Odom, it's a bad look showing up late for court when you're being charged with not showing up to court at all. What's the state's position on this? Judge, I will leave it in the discretion of the court. I would like to know why the defendant originally failed to appear. The defense counsel's motion says it was a misunderstanding. That was a month and a half ago, and now she's late an hour and a half to court today. So I'd like to know if there's an underlying issue that needs to be addressed. Um, like I said, like I've told him, it was a misunderstanding the first time I missed court. Um, so that and that's that what does misunderstanding mean what does that mean okay well i had not had to show up for court the, my other times and um miss hudson when she, i spoke to her in the last time before february 28th she told me that she hadn't even spoken to the state's attorney yet and it would be sometime in march um before she would be able to you know do that so i just assumed that I didn't need to be here for February the 28th since I had not had to show up any other time. Um, and then uh, this morning, I just I was sick this morning, and um, and uh, I am here. Um, it's not I'm not trying. To what's the What's the status of the underlying case in this? The charges are. Where are we on it? Yeah. He's charged with trafficking, so we're going to probably need to take depositions, Judge. But she's got a, a min -man, minimum mandatory that she's looking at.
What's the state? What's the state's position on this? What's her current? What's she? What's she on? Um, she on a bond? Uh, obviously, she's on bond. But. It was a thirty-five hundred. Okay, Miss Odom. You're lucky you ain't gonna be in the county jail until this is resolved. You got very serious charges that are yes, sir, I understand. that are dealing with it and you can't even get to court. You show up late to court again, you're gonna be spending the rest of your time between now and the time of trial in the county jail. Yes, sir, I understand. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. You better Thank stay in you. touch with your attorney. Yes, sir. I Not up to them to chase you down, it's up to you to chase them down. Yes, sir. Thank you. In pretrial we'll conference. Allow the withdrawal. Thank you, Judge. Thank in pretrial conference June twenty seventh, nine. Well, pre-trial, January 27th, 29th is with the inmates. Right, June 27th, right, right, right. June 27th at 9 o'clock. Okay. So. And the other one, Judge, I was going to try to deal with this morning is uh, on your afternoon docket, you have William Tidwell. Well? Yes. He's present in the courtroom uh, for the record. Case number is 20CF3232. Um, Mr. Tidwell, can you... Mr. Tidwell is, is blind, Judge, so it's going to take him a minute. Um, on Mr. Tidwell's case, it was set for a contested uh, suppression hearing this afternoon, but I just inherited the case, so I don't know anything about it, so I'm not prepared to go forward. So what we're going to do is ask for a continuance today. The state has made a new offer on the case. Uh, I would like to um, have a chance to meet with Mr. Tidwell and go over that offer to see if he wants to take that instead of resetting the suppression hearing. So can we set it for a status conference um, Are you going to meet? Are you going to be able to meet with him today? I, I don't know that I'll be able to meet with him today, Judge, because we've got pretrial gotcha. conferences all next week and the 28th. Okay. So I would probably ask for May 26th at 9. Okay. So we'll, are we going to continue? We're continuing the motion hearing for May 26th. Okay. Well, status hearing on May 26th at 9, Judge. And then I can, when I talk to him, I can see what we're going to do, whether we're going to go forward with the suppression hearing or if we're going to plead it out. Okay. And then we can, if we need to have a contested suppression hearing, we'll, we'll reset that. Okay, so we'll, we'll have a status conference on May 26th, 9 a.m. Yes, sir. And, and make sure and be in contact, be in contact with uh, your attorney in the meantime. Thank you, Judge. Okay. Very good. Okay. So we will uh, we'll take about a 10 minute break. Then we'll uh, we'll be ready to go, Mr. Drell. If you will uh, you'll walk up to my office right now. I'll uh, I'll talk to my judicial assistant. She can get it set right up. And then we'll we'll bring it back and give it. Well, I guess we don't need to give it to the state. We'll just plug it in.
Okay. We're going to do Barentine first. Judge, for the record, 21 CF 141 and 22 MM 954 of a written offer of plea, if I may approach with this horse. Thank you. Judge, before the court is Katharina Barentine. She would tender a plea to the court, uh, an admission to the violation of probation in the 21 CF case, and a plea of no contest in 22 MM 954. The agreed upon sentence would be that she'd be adjudicated guilty on all cases and counts, sentenced to nine months in the Okaloosa County Jail concurrently on all cases, and receive credit for all time served. Fines, costs, and fees would be assessed. Her probation would be revoked and terminated, obviously, and uh, all financial obligations would be reduced to a civil judgment lien. And this would be a, a downward departure but based on an uncoursed plea bargain with the state attorney's office. Aaron Tyler, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Is the state in agreement? Yes, sir. And the score sheet as well? Yes. Okay. Mr. Barentine, you, you uh, heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Yes, Your Honor. Is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? And I see there's a sentencing recommendation, which is really a plea agreement that you've signed as well. Have you gone over this in detail with your attorney to make sure you had all your legal questions answered? Yes, Your Honor. You understand that by entering into this plea agreement, you're waiving the right to go to a trial and contest these issues and confront witnesses, etc. You believe that's in your best interest? And the core of this, obviously, is the adjudication of guilt on all counts. In nine months in the Okaloosa County Jail, you will get credit for time served, um, as well as uh, some court costs, etc. There will be no probation to follow. It will be revoke and terminate the probation in the uh, uh, 21 CF 141. That's all based upon your understanding as well? Okay. Did anybody threaten or coerce you to get you to enter into this plea? No, sir. Anybody promise you anything that wasn't stated here in open court and contained in your plea agreement? No, sir. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea agreement, sentence you to nine months in the county jail, uh, credit for time served, as well as the other uh, agreement entered into in the plea and sentencing agreement. Thank you very much. Your Honor, that's all I have. May I be excused? Thank See you, you next week. <coughs> is the state ready to proceed? Yes, Your Honor. Would you go ahead and announce? Is the defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, your Honor, this is the State of Florida versus Jackie Mott, case number 4618CF738, sentencing on a violation of probation. Your Honor, I believe that the victim's parents in this case are wanting to make a victim impact statement. Um, she is appearing by Zoom. Do you have a, your Zoom link up? I do have the Zoom. Her name is um, Nicole Russo. Okay. 
the defense wish to make an opening statement or just go proceed to witnesses? We can proceed with witnesses. What is the name of? Her name is Nicole Russo.
Your Honor, it might be under Joey Bruce. I, I see a Joe set up there. It's on Nicole. There it is. Nicole? Either Nicole, Joey, or Bob is what I was told. Hello. Ms. Russo, can you hear me? Nicole Russo, you are on mute. Under Joey Russo or Bob Russo, um, Miss Russo said that she has not been admitted yet. So she clearly was. Joseph. Yeah. I'm sorry. Did you say Joseph Russo? Council approach.
Miss Nicole Russo.
working with uh, various diagnoses from anxiety, depression, ADHD, traumatic brain injury. Um, so I would say my, my specialties, the, the, the two areas that I, I enjoy the most are A, working with children, and then B, I do a lot of work with adults using cognitive behavioral techniques to help with things like anger management, problem solving, stress management, things like that. Okay. Now, have you had opportunity to meet with uh, the defendant, Mr. Jackie Mott? Uh, I met with him by, by back in, on uh, February 4th. Uh, at that time, he was uh, uh, in the jail there at Crestview. And uh, I coordinated with the folks up there an opportunity to sit down and meet with him for about an hour over the phone to do a psychosocial evaluation to uh, assess whether or not I felt he could possibly benefit from counseling services, uh, kind of given the situation he found himself in. Okay, and what was the result of that evaluation? Uh, I, f I found to be, uh, I think understandably, but very cooperative, very motivated, very pleasant, very open with me over what originally landed him onto probation, as well as the incident that apparently occurred that led him to, that led him to be charged with a violation of that. Um, and, and he was very open about the, the whole situation with me, expressed a good deal of remorse for things that went wrong, uh, and, and was very clear about his willingness to receive any help he might be able to get so that he could learn and make better choices in the future. Were you able to identify any um, specific mental disorders or areas that you believed you could assist Mr. Mott in your practice? It sounded to me like he, uh, like he uh, suffered from some uh, post-traumatic stress, uh, some of that going back to the original incident that I believe led him uh, to get into trouble. Uh, he also mentioned he has a high level uh, of anxiety uh, and that he does meet with uh, uh, Dr. Goldberg for uh, uh, kind of oversight of a medical marijuana card uh, for that. Um, I felt he certainly dealt with uh, dealt with anxiety, uh, and and I didn't doubt uh, there were aspects of trauma based on what had occurred previously. Uh, to your knowledge, at that point in time, was Mr. Mott being treated for the PTSD uh, that you've identified? Uh, not outside of seeing Dr. Goldberg for the medicinal marijuana card to treat it uh, to treat it medicinally. Now, as far as you're aware, was uh, Mr. Mott seeing Dr. Goldberg for the PTSD or the anxiety, or are you, do you have a, a base of knowledge in that area? Yeah, it, it sounded to me like he saw, like he was seeing him for both, uh, but the only treatment that uh, I sensed that he was getting was just making sure that, uh, you know, that in Dr. Goldberg's opinion that you know, things were, things were working, uh, that he was using it as he was supposed to, uh, and that he was getting some medicinal help from it. But I didn't sense that he, uh, that he had been in any counseling at that point. He did express, though, a great deal of openness in that. Uh, he mentioned to me that his, um, his wife uh, has been a patient at Dr. Goldberg's office for a number of years and that he's been very involved in her treatment and so that he believes very much in treatment and he was actually excited to know that I, that if possible, I would be allowed, uh, I would be open to working with him and that I had a good professional relationship with Dr. Goldberg as well and that I would make every effort for us to coordinate his care and make sure he was getting the best care possible. And that brings me to my next question, is uh, as far as your evaluation with Mr. Mott is concerned, do you believe that you can provide, um, assist him with these issues, provide uh, uh, counseling um, moving forward that would benefit Mr. Mott? Yes, I do. And again, this was an initial impression, you know, based on uh, just under an hour, hour phone call with him. But I sensed in talking with him that he had at least an average IQ. Uh, someone, and, and based on our conversation, he seemed to have an understanding of the questions I asked, was able to answer them in, uh, answer them in detail and fully, and seemed to show to me the cognitive ability to be able to benefit 
uh, from some of the uh, therapeutic techniques that I would expect I would be using with him uh, to try to help him. Um, in the, the therapeutic techniques that you're talking about, can you describe that briefly? Do you have um, a specific plan that you would utilize as far as assisting Mr. Mott? Yes, my, my primary plan would be, would be using what we call uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, which a number of people may have heard that term. It's, it's where we help the client to identify thoughts that, may, that will come up in their mind based on a situation that they're in or events that are going on around them, and then identifying what feelings those thoughts tend to generate. And then out of that, out of those feelings, what behaviors tend to follow from that. So, for example, um, you know, he, he felt someone had st had stolen money from him, hypothetically. Uh, that the, the natural response would be for the person to get angry. And then out of that anger, I'm going to go and be aggressive with this person to teach them a lesson, not to steal money from me. So what we try and do is we try and intervene very early in that process, Okay. Uh, you heard someone, you're missing some money, you heard someone might have stolen it from you. What are some other possible explanations here? That's one possible explanation. What, what are others? Well, another might be that, okay, maybe, maybe I left the money at home. Maybe I didn't really put it in my wallet like I thought. And we'll try and go through one or two or three different explanations so that out of that we can then identify, well, what would your feeling be and what would your behavior most likely be? Because what I find and what I would say many of us field find is that that people will get upset about something as is understandable uh, but then out of that will act quickly on that emotion and not consider the various possible alternative uh, explanations for what is going on and so what I try and do is I try and intervene in those early thoughts this guy did what to me and then intervene and go okay that could be one explanation look, let's look at another let's look at another and usually in those alternative explanations, we can help the person maybe come to a possible conclusion that, well, all right, maybe that person didn't do something bad to me. Maybe they didn't steal me. Maybe this is the explanation. And then out of that, we get a different feeling and a different course of action. So I try and work with them cognitively, and that's where getting the sense of him having at least an average IQ was important, uh, because what I try and do is try and help them then look at their array of options so that instead of acting just on emotion, we can uh, come up with a specific plan of here's the here's the number one way I'm going to try and handle this. And for example, you know, in this kind of situation, hopefully without anger, how can I address this in a be, in, in a better way, in a healthier way, uh, so that we give them in a range of a, a range of options, so that there is less of a likelihood that they follow through on say acting out of anger. Now, if the court were to order any additional treatment um, uh, apart from what you're recommending, would you be able to provide that? Uh, yes, I would. Uh, he, he acknowledged to me, he said after any, uh, any like mandated counseling, uh, and I think I'd recommended like 12 sessions with him to go over these things and really try and uh, hammer, hammer some points home and help him really grasp them. Uh, but he had, he had indicated to me I would be willing and open to working with you further because I want to grow, I want to improve as a person, don't want to be in this kind of trouble again. Uh, I've worked with many people that are on probation that have been in trouble with court before. I've, I've given updated reports to probation officers here in the county before uh, and worked with attorneys such as yourself before. So I would be... Uh, I would feel very comfortable, and as long as he was compliant and coming in and, and you know, doing his part as a, as a patient, I would be very happy and would feel very comfortable working with him. Thank you, Mr. Lamb. Um, is there anything that um, you observed or noticed uh, in your evaluation with Mr. Mott that you feel is pertinent for the court to know that I haven't asked you today? Uh, no, no, sir. Uh, just that he was, uh, I felt that he was very open. Uh, and again, I understand he was in, in, you know, in jail and probably wanting to get out, but he really did seem to be very open. He didn't seem to hesitate at all in terms of sharing any relevant facts about his case because I was brand new to meeting with him. Um, and, and I, like I said, I felt he was really compliant in some follow-up, uh, like conversations briefly with, uh, Dr. Goldberg. I, I've since found that he, 
Uh, my impression was that he was a good patient there, uh, that he was very helpful to his wife in terms of her treatment. So my impression is, is even more so that I think he would be a good candidate for counseling. And I'd, again, I'm, I'm going to uh, uh, require that he come on a regular basis uh, and be there. But as long as he does that, I, and I sense he will, I think we, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can make some very nice progress for him, get him back to working, contribute to the community as he has been before. Thank you, Mr. Lynn. No further questions. Does the state wish to inquire? Yes, Your Honor. <clears throat> Mr. Lamb, you stated that you met with the defendant one time, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. And that was for one hour? Yes, that was for about a one hour session on February 4th. Was that in person or was that over the phone? That over the phone. Uh, that was the only way I was able to do the evaluation, kind of given my work demands. And during that one hour phone session that you spoke to the defendant, um, did you make a diagnosis of the defendant's me any mental disorders? Uh, it was just a very brief uh, initial diagnosis, kind of going on what we had discussed. And so I, I, I did concur that he probably had at least some symptoms of PTSD and certainly had uh, a high level of anxiety. So you made your, your, di your initial diagnosis based on what the defendant had told you? Yes, that's normally what I need to do, whether it be uh, a telehealth session like this uh, or by phone or if the person is in my office, I try and gather as much relevant information as I can. And we, we always press that that is an initial diagnosis that can always be subject to change. Uh, but in, in the short time that I had, I thought, okay, he is being treated for these conditions and he's being treated uh, medically for them. So I did not have any problem with at least initially uh, putting that down uh, as my initial diagnosis for him. And during the time that you met with him, did you administer any psychological tests? Uh, uh, no, ma'am. I uh, being trained as a licensed clinical social worker, I, I didn't get trained in psychological testing. Uh, I believe in it quite a bit, and I'm not against. Uh, in fact, many of my patients for further psychological testing to make sure we're not missing any relevant uh, uh, mental health symptoms, which uh, again is why my diagnosis was initial. Uh, that certainly wouldn't be anything I would be against, you know, necessarily in his case or any of my patients' cases. And did you have an opportunity to review any of the probable cause affidavits related to the defendant's underlying charge or his violations of probation? Uh, no, ma'am, and I did not. I just spoke with, with the patient, and I spoke with uh, his attorney briefly before that. So you never spoke to any of his family members, his mother? Uh, no, no. Did you use anything else to corroborate the statements that he made to you about his... Um, diagnosis that he claims that he has? Uh, at, at the time, it was just based on my interview with him. Since then, I have, uh, I have spoken with Dr. Berg, and I have uh, gotten, gotten some of his impressions of the client, which, which basically kind of furthered my initial impressions. Uh, although, again, uh, like with you mentioning psychological testing, there is the possibility that maybe uh, there, there could be some, some things in his condition that I certainly was not able to pick up on the initial phone call. Uh, and, and my impressions over what I think I can do to help him are, are definitely, they're based on those initial impressions. Okay. Thank you. I have no further questions. Very good. Um, Mr. Lamb, I believe you just testified that you did speak with Dr. Goldberg after you had met with uh, Mr. Mott. And, yes. Um, did uh, anything about your conversations with Mr. Uh, Dr. Goldberg indicate that your initial diagnosis of PTSD was incorrect or inaccurate? Uh, no, I didn't get uh, anything from him that would indicate that that was incorrect or inaccurate. Uh, he did share with me that because he, is being, he was being seen for the medicinal marijuana that he does not see him as often uh, as, as he might with other, other cases. 
uh, but he did have a history with him because of he had a long history of treating his wife, and, he, and Jackie had been very involved in a very helpful way in the treatment of his wife. Uh, so I did get a sense that, again, that I, I got a good sense for the likelihood of compliance. Okay, and just to clarify, because I believe it was the state that asked you um, regarding his PTSD that defendant claimed he had. Um, was this diagnosis of PTSD a diagnosis that you made or that Mr. Mott told you he had? Mr. Mott shared with me that he had that and based on the events of what had happened that had gotten him into trouble here as well as his previous case, um, I, I certainly took the view that it would be very, very possible that, that he suffered from enough of the conditions for that, uh, enough uh, of the criteria for that condition for that to be the case. Uh, and again, like I said before, that was just an initial diagnosis. I would certainly need some more time to review that a little bit more further, but I didn't have any reason to think that that would be like way out of line from based on his experiences and what he was going through. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamb. We appreciate your assistance. I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, place you in, in the uh, back in the waiting room, and you can disconnect. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Very good. I'm going to call Dr. Eric Goldberg, Your Honor. Okay. Is he here? Is there anybody else that we're going to need the uh, Zoom? No, Your Honor. Not for defense. State? No? Uh, no, Your Honor. Okay. Very good. We'll go ahead and disconnect this. Okay. Sir, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, to so help you God? I do. Now, please state your name, sir. Eric Goldberg. And where are you employed? Uh, in Destin, Florida, at the Crane Center. Okay. And um, what, uh, what type of duties do you have there at the Crane Center? Uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> a long list. Uh, I'm a uh, general psychiatrist at the Crane Center. Okay. I appreciate you abbreviating that for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so general psychologist, you said. Um, psychiatrist. Psychiatrist, mm -hmm. I apologize. Um, so um, do you have any kind of special education, or rather what is your education that um, you possessed allowing you to obtain that position? Uh, after high school, uh, college, and then med school, uh, four years of med school, four years of resi residency, and two years beyond that to be board certified. And do you have any special certifications or other um, areas of expertise? I, I'm board certified in general adult psychiatry. And have you had opportunity to meet Mr. Jackie Mott? Yes, I have. When did you initially meet Mr. Mott? I believe, uh, unfortunately I don't have my records with me, I believe initially in 2018. Um, so at least a few years ago, correct? Yes. And um, what was the, um, why did he come to see you? He came to see me for generalized anxiety disorder. Um, is that a diagnosis that you made at the time? Yes. Um, and has Mr. Mott continued to see you um, since roughly 2018 for this disorder? Yes, he has. Um, have you been able to diagnose Mr. Mott with any other specific uh, mental disorders? I have not. So you don't treat him for PTSD? I do not. Um, have you ever attempted to diagnose him with uh, anything other than the generalized anxiety disorder? No, I have not. Based on your time with Mr. Mott, and well, let me back up. Um, have you had any um, conversations with Mr. Eric Lamb and uh, regarding Mr. Mott? Yes, I have. 
and what were those conversations regarding? Uh, general coordination of care regarding uh, concerns that I had about Mr. Mott as well as uh, anything that he may have found during his evaluation of Mr. Mott. Did Mr. Lamb disclose to you his initial diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder? Yes, he did. Uh, based on your relationship with Mr. Mott over the years, do you believe that um, Mr. Lamb's uh, initial diagnosis is at least credible, if not accurate? Yes. Um, Now, the extent of your interaction with Mr. Mott, could you briefly describe um, your treatment of Mr. Mott's generalized anxiety disorder? I saw him uh, for generalized anxiety disorder uh, for medical marijuana treatment uh, per the state of Florida. That requires me to have an in-person visit twice a year. Okay. Um, but apart from that, has there been any um, counseling or other services that you provided Mr. Mott? On an occasion, Mr. Mott called to ask questions about uh, concerns with his family, concerns with his anxiety, concerns with uh, stressful situations. Um, which brings me to my next question. Um, do you have any interaction with Mr. Mott outside of the uh, treatment for generalized anxiety disorder? Yes. Okay, and what kind of interaction does that entail? Mr. Mott uh, accompanied his spouse uh, on possibly every, uh, nearly every uh, interaction I had with her during her visits. And how long have you been seeing um, Mr. Mott's spouse? Well over a decade. Okay. And um, do you know when um, Mr. Mott met uh, his current spouse? I believe that was in 2019. Um, have you been able to notice any kind of difference in um, her conduct since um, 2018, as um, far as your treatment of her condition goes? Yes, I have. And what kind of, um, if you could briefly describe the change in her condition? I believe that he has been uh, extremely beneficial to her insofar as providing a foundation for her to achieve the goals and dreams that she had been trying to achieve for years. Um, based on your relationship with Ms. Mott prior to meeting Mr. Mott, is it your testimony that she was not capable of um, achieving the goals? She had significant difficulties achieving those goals. And um, since meeting Mr. Mott, has that, um, have you noticed it being significantly less difficult to achieve the goal? Uh, yes, I believe he was a significantly stabilizing force in her life to allow her to achieve those goals. Could you briefly describe how or, or what leads you to believe um, he is such a stabilizing force? He was in my eyes and ears in the field, so to speak, uh, insofar as uh, how she was doing. And any time there was a concern, a question, uh, he would notify myself or the clinic to let me know that either she was doing well or she was not doing well and was monumental in assisting us with helping her to maintain, maintain her appointments, uh, maintain medication compliance, treatment compliance, as well as identify concerns which she may not have been able to address or was not aware of. So based on your experience with Mr. Mott, um, in your opinion, is he, um, would he be amenable to the treatment that Mr. Lamb has described? Absolutely. Do you believe that would benefit him? Absolutely.
you very much, Dr. Goldberg. No further questions. Counsel for the state. Mr. Goldberg, you said that you have been treating the defendant for four years. Is that correct? I believe that's close to accurate. Since 2018? I believe so. And how many times a year um, do you see him as a patient? Uh, I I've submitted a letter to the court through his attorney, and I believe I saw him 14 times since 2018. Uh, individually and then I encountered him an additional 14 to 18 times with his spouse I'd have to check the letter too and you stated that you diagnosed the defendant with anxiety correct yes and what did you base your diagnosis on that he had anxiety personal interview did you um, speak with any of his family members or use anything else to corroborate um, anything that he told you? Uh, used additional information from family members, mainly his spouse and uh, other family members related to his spouse. And which family members were those? Uh, Father-in-law and his spouse. So you've continuously treated him since 2018? Correct. And are you aware that um, during his time while he was being treated by you that he has committed two new law violations? No, I was not. So is it safe to say that you have not had an opportunity to review any of the affidavits, police reports, anything relating to these new law violations that he committed? That is correct. Thank you, Doctor. I don't have any further questions. Thank you, Doctor. You may step down. Your Honor, we don't have any further witnesses. Just, um, uh, I believe, uh, Ms. Mock, uh, would like to make a statement as well. No further questions. identify yourself for the record <clears throat> my name is Haley Mott you may proceed okay your honor I met Jay two years after his boating accident several years before I had been diagnosed with an illness I was having trouble managing with Jay's help I was able to finish my college degree get a job teaching first grade and become a mother I depend on Jay every day he stays home in the mornings with our two-year-old so that I can get to work. He spends the morning with him and gets him ready and takes him to preschool. After that, he works all day doing jobs for his business, sometimes late into the evening. Jay has led me back into the church. We attend every week in addition to weekly Bible studies. One of our men's group even meets at our home. We pray daily to be good parents and to be good people. Jay and I have a great support system, our families, friends, our church family. I know these people will support Jay's effort to become a better person by learning <clears throat> how to control his emotions. Please allow Jay to come home to us. He has three children who love him very much and need him in their lives. 
I love him for his amazing heart. He will give a stranger the shirt off his back. Please give him the opportunity to give him the help and the therapy he so desperately deserves. Thank you very much. Would you identify yourself for the court and you may make your statement? Sure. I'm Brooke Barron. I'm Haley Mott's mother. I want to say that um, I've known Jay since Haley um, met Jay. And um, I just want to say he is an amazing father to his kids. I've, I've watched him not only with his um, two children from a different marriage, but also with my grandchild, um, Joshua. He is a good person um, obviously just like everyone else in the world he has his flaws um, his happened to be I think controlling his emotions and um, his impulsive reactions however he is a man with a huge heart um, he's active in his church he has a huge uh, church family that supports him he owns his own business. He's a productive member of society. Um, I think there are several different letters from uh, different contractors that use uh, him as an electrician, um, and they count on him to get their jobs done. They, they need him as well. My belief um, in this situation, I, I feel so badly for the family of everybody, um, all the families of everybody involved in that accident. Um, the boating accident but it, but it was um, you know an accident and I, and I just feel like it could have happened to anybody I know that the state um, you know offered him plea bargain after plea bargain plea deal after plea deals because it, they didn't want it to go to court he agreed to his his plea um, and then since that time he's had two bad lapses in judgment um, you know one with grabbing the shirt of Bo Campbell and then the second with the inappropriate very inappropriate text messages that he sent um, but does that justify taking a decade of his life away from his three children and from his family is that really the best way to repair the damage that has been done um, I think that therapy is much better for him than jail I don't think that he's he's going to gain anything from being in jail and I think that his three children and his family members are going to lose um, immensely for him spending a decade in jail I'm just I just think that the punishment here should fit the crime um, thank you Your Honor. Please raise your right hand and swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth. Your Honor. Um, Your Honor, I'm extremely sorry for my actions. And um, these last four months in jail, I have given me a lot of time to reflect on my actions. And, uh, and to realize how much I do need help. I have always worked hard to be a good father to all my children, and I know how important it is for me to be there for them. 
I hate that I have hurt them, my wife, my family, and my friends with the impulsive decisions that I have shown, showed, have handled, I should have handled differently. And given the opportunity, um, I will in the future. Um, I hate I put myself in those situation and I know I can handle, I, I can do better. If allowed to return to my family, I will work hard to become a better man. I will continue to operate my business, be involved in my church, be present and supportive to my children and family. But in addition, I will attend therapy the whole time. If allowed, I'm on probation over and beyond what is the court requires. Um, I've all, all I've 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 been going to therapy, but I really know that it helps. I will work really hard, uh, extremely hard, to manage my emotions in a more appropriate way. I apologize to all the people I have hurt uh, with my actions and will become a better person if given the opportunity. I would, I would ask that the court would al allow me to do this counseling and this anger management and hopefully the court could find it to give me a large suspended sentence with maybe community control and let me show the court that I can honor the agreement of probation that I agreed to originally um, for the boat accident and to show the court that I can do what I say I'm going to do and I'm I'm not a, a bad person and it was a boat accident the boat accident was is an accident and you know the accident wouldn't occurred if the boy hadn't have been sitting on the bow and blocking my vision at night I hate that we didn't go to trial so I didn't realize how taking a deal is such a bad decision for me in this specific situation I hate that the family didn't ever get to know what really happened on that boat that night and uh, I will regret you know my heart goes out to them and uh, thank you for letting me speak your honor please give me the opportunity to reinstate my probation please thank you very much I just want to start off by going through the facts of the original case why we're here just to give the court a brief understanding of what happened in 2017 on July 19th 2017 Anthony Jarab was tragically killed as a result of the defendant's actions on that evening the defendant was driving his boat he was speeding he did not have his navigational lights on and he collided head-on with a piling sending three passengers on the boat to the hospital with injuries where Mr. Jarab was pronounced dead as a result of these injuries later that day. 
There was a search warrant conducted of the defendant's blood. It was executed hours later. The defendant was found to have controlled substances in his system, MDMA, MDA, and THC. Even after all of that, after this horrific crime, the defendant was offered a plea to a second degree felony of vessel homicide with five years probation. A significant downward departure. He was given that opportunity, he was given a second chance by being placed on probation September 14th of 2021. On October 1st of 2021, two weeks after he was placed on probation, he committed another violent crime by battering Mr. Campbell, a 65-year-old man. And then shortly after his first VOP hearing, the defendant violated an injunction by having contact with his ex-wife through text messages he sent to his 11-year-old daughter, let that bitch dog know we're coming for her. The defendant is not amenable to community-based supervision. He scores 186.4 points, which would be the lowest permissible sentence of 118.8 months, Department of Corrections. However, this court can sentence the defendant to a max of 15 years, Department of Corrections, based on his original plea as a second degree felony. His probation officer testified at the violation of probation hearing that she recommends that his probation be revoked and terminated and he be sentenced to a period of incarceration, which is what the state is asking for. The state is asking that this court revoke and terminate his probation and sentence him to 15 years, Department of Corrections, with applicable costs and fees. It's the state's understanding that the defense is asking this court to either place him back on probation or deviate from the guidelines by sentencing him to a reduced sentence. For the record, the state strongly objects to the defendant be being placed back on probation. And under the Florida statute 921.002, a downward departure is prohibited unless there is circumstances or factors that reasonably justify the mitigation of the sentence in accordance with the statute. I'm sure the court is very aware that the departure is a two-step process. The court must first identify whether it can depart and then whether it should depart by looking at the totality of the circumstances. And the burden of proving a departure is on the defendant to show by a preponderance of the evidence using substantial, competent and substantial evidence. The defendant has not met the standard for a downward departure. We put on testimony today. I believe that the defense is going to be asking the court for a downward departure based on the fact that the defendant requires specialized treatment for a mental disorder that is unrelated to substance abuse or addiction and that the defendant is amenable to treatment. There's three prongs that the defendant must meet in order to meet this basis for the downward departure. First, he must show the existence of a mental disorder. He must also show the need for a specialized treatment and that the defendant is amenable to treatment. We first heard from Dr. Or, sorry, Mr. Lamb, who is a clinical psychologist. He's not a doctor. He's not qualified to diagnose someone with a mental disorder. He stated that he did identify a mental disorder, but that that identification of PTSD and anxiety was based solely on a one hour conversation that he had with the defendant over the phone. He did not do any independent research to corroborate anything that the defendant told him. He did not review any of the arrest reports, violation of probation affidavits. He did not speak with any of his family members. We then heard from Dr. Goldberg. Dr. Goldberg, again, spoke with the defendant. He made his diagnosis of anxiety solely, not PTSD, based on his conversations with the defendant and a conversation that he had with his wife and his mother-in-law. He stated that he had been treating the defendant for four years. He'd seen him a total of 14 times over the four years, and he was treating him with, for anxiety, using medical marijuana. He didn't even know that the defendant had committed new crimes while he was under his treatment. The 
second of all, the second prong is that there must be a need for specialized treatment. The defense did not put on, on any evidence today stating that there's a need by the defendant for specialized treatment. All we heard from Dr. La uh, Mr. Lamb and Dr. Goldberg was that they recommended that he have some counseling sessions, 12 counseling sessions, nothing about it being specialized. And Mr. Lamb talked about during these counseling, counseling sessions, they would be doing cognitive behavioral therapy. That's not a specialized treatment. And third, the defendant must show that he's amenable to treatment. We heard from both the defense witnesses that he's willing to accept treatment, but that's not the same thing. Case law defines amenable to treatment as a reasonable probability that he will successfully overcome the mental disorder or physical disability through a treatment program. And that the defendant must provide competent and substantial evidence to show that his future conduct will change due to treatment. He's been being treated since 2018 and during that time he's committed two new crimes. This defendant has not put on any evidence that his future conduct is likely to change due to the treatment that he's been being received, that he's been receiving, or that he will receive in the future. They have not met any of the prongs of that standard to warrant a downward departure in this case. Honor, furthermore, the state's position is that the point of sentencing is not to rehab somebody. It's for punishment. Jackie Mott needs to be punished for the, his reckless disregard for the law, for this court, and for society as a whole. Probation, who supervised him for two weeks, is recommending that his probation be revoked and terminated with a period of incarceration. And the state is asking this court to adopt that recommendation. The state believes that based on his history, his refusal to take responsibility for his behavior, his attempt to sub subvert the sentencing process, fabricate a mental illness, shows a contempt for the system and the victims in the court. We are asking this court to sentence him to full criminal liability of 15 years. The defendant is still not willing to take responsible for his actions. Even today, he got up when he made a statement and he gets up there and he blamed the victim for the fact that he died. The person that died in this case, he's up there blaming him, saying, if he weren't in my way, I wouldn't have crashed into that hole. The defendant's attitude during this whole thing has been reprehensible. And Your Honor, we are asking this court to, to hold him accountable for his actions and sentence him to the full liability of 15 years. Thank you. Yes, Your Honor. Your Honor, we're here today based on the violation of probation Mr. Mott pled to for vessel homicide. The state has presented absolutely no evidence here today about any drug use regarding uh, that period of time or at all. Um, the only evidence of any type of drug use came from Dr. Goldberg who has prescribed Mr. Mott medicinal marijuana to treat a general anxiety disorder that he has identified and diagnosed. The state has presented no evidence today whatsoever regarding any uh, counter to the methods employed by Dr. Goldberg or Mr. Lamb. Ms. The state simply says that's not enough. How do we know that's not enough, Your Honor? They've presented no evidence whatsoever regarding scientific method, what's proper in the field. You heard from two witnesses from the defense today saying that 
That's what I do for my clients. I speak with them. It's an initial interview. Um, as far as Dr. Goldberg is concerned, Your Honor, uh, he spoke with um, various family members he testified to, and Mr. Lamb testified that he spoke with Dr. Goldberg after his initial meeting with Mr. Mott. It's not just a one-hour phone call. It, that was the initial interview that Mr. Lamb conducted and then verified with Dr. Goldberg, who says who he says he has an excellent working relationship with and has known Mr. Mott for several years. It, he did, Mr. Lamb did say that that was an initial diagnosis. Of course it is, Your Honor. Um, any kind of these diagnoses could change over time. That's what the treatment is there for, is to help manage these disorders and overcome them if possible. And Mr. Lamb specifically stated that he believes the counseling would assist Mr. Mott in managing and overcoming these mental disorders. So as far as being amenable to treatment, Mr. Mott is both desirable of and amenable to that treatment. Mr. Lamb said so himself. He believes that he can help Mr. Mott with these issues. Specifically the PTSD that according to Dr. Goldberg had been undiagnosed and untreated throughout this entire time. <coughs> Mr. Lamb identified the PTSD and believes that his, and I asked him, what specialized treatment would you employ? He said the cognitive behavioral therapy and went on to explain to the court how that works and how he would continue with Mr. Mott beyond any of his recommended sessions, whatever the court is willing to order and whatever Mr. Mott is willing to accept or willing to put in, Mr. Lamb said he would be there to help Mr. Mott address, and overcome, and manage these disorders. One that had been undiagnosed, one that was being treated with medical marijuana, not counseling that Mr. Lamb wants to employ. That is the specialized treatment here, Your Honor. The, behavioral cogn the cognitive behavioral therapy <clears throat> and all of the other um, tools that Mr. Lamb uh, testified here today that he would employ in assisting Mr. Mott overcome these disorders. Your Honor, uh, and of course, Your Honor has discretion to modify based on a finding of violation of probation. Um, that comes from Florida Statute 948.06 sub 2E. After such hearing, the court may revoke, modify, or continue the probation or community control. So Your Honor does have the discretion here today to modify Mr. Mott's probation um, to include counseling um, as the court deems fit. As far as the mitigating circumstances, Your Honor, we believe that we have met the requirements uh, under 921.0026 sub, uh, sub D, defendant requires specialized treatment for a mental disorder <clears throat> that is unrelated to substance abuse or addiction or for a physical disability and the defendant is amenable to treatment. Um, Your Honor, there has been no indication that any of the disorders identified by Mr. Lamb or Dr. Goldberg are related to a substance abuse uh, issue or addiction. Um, Mr. Lamb again specifically testified that he believed the specialized treatment, the cognitive behavioral therapy, would uh, benefit Mr. Mott and assist him in managing and overcoming these mental disorders, namely PTSD and general uh, anxiety disorder. Your Honor, We've also heard from Ms. Mott today um, related to Dr. Goldberg's testimony. Ms. Mott told you that she has her own mental issues uh, and health issues that she is continuing to struggle with and to overcome. And both Dr. Goldberg and Ms. Mott told you uh, today how necessary Mr. Mott is to assisting her with uh, her continued success in managing those disorders or those issues as well, Your Honor. Um, Ms. Mott told you how instrumental Mr. Mott is to the care of their uh, two-year-old child. Ms. Russo today spoke about her, grandson, her granddaughter losing her father. And yes, Your Honor, it's, it is horrible. Nobody should have to let, go through something like that. But it, it's not it's not just that Mr. Mott's son go through the same thing, especially when all of the experts 
you heard from here today are saying that we can help him. We can make sure he gets better and is a productive member of society and can deal with these issues. Your Honor, an eye for an eye and the whole world's blind. And I understand the state's position that sentencing is about punishment, but there has to be a rehab rehabilitative aspect to it as well, Your Honor. That, that's the whole reason we have these types of programs is for rehabilitation. If the sole purpose was about punishment, we wouldn't have drug court. We wouldn't have veterans court. We'd just have that many more jails that we shove people into. There is an aspect of rehabilitation to this, Your Honor. It's not solely punishment. And we're asking the court to allow Mr. Mott the opportunity to engage in the intensive rehabilitation program that he has not had up until this point. Your Honor, I will be the first to tell you that issuing medical marijuana is not a specialized treatment. We are asking today for the court to allow Mr. Mott to obtain that specialized treatment through the counseling of Mr. Lamb. Ms. Mott told you today about how uh, Mr. Mott has brought her back into the church and how they're engaged in their church groups. Um, Your Honor, I believe this shows that Mr. Mott can be a productive member of society, can engage the community in a positive way. Um, we're, we're asking today, Your Honor, that you modify Mr. Mott's probation to include a period of community control in addition to the five-year period uh, initially imposed by the court. Um, if the court believes incarceration is uh, appropriate here, we would ask that the court uh, impose that as a condition of his probation uh, so that the court doesn't have to revoke and institute a new term. Um, Uh, otherwise, Your Honor, it, just as Mr. Mott asked you, uh, if the court is willing to suspend a longer incarcerative period to remind Mr. Mott to keep it on the straight and narrow, uh, Your Honor, I believe that would be appropriate. What we believe is inappropriate at this point is ripping Mr. Mott away from his family when they so desperately need him. Thank you, Your Honor. I have a legal question. Yes, sir. Is the do you agree with the state's position that a downward departure has to be proved in order? No, Your to Honor. Downwardly depart? No, Your Honor. Not at this point. That's the whole um, point I was trying to make, and I'm sorry I didn't explain it better. Um, if you want to modify the sentence, uh, the probation, there is there is no requirement that a downward departure be proven in order for you to do that. I believe the Let me give only, you a chance to respond to word, counsel. I believe the only point a downward departure must be proven to um, go beyond the guideline score sheet is um, if the court were to revoke and sentence again. I believe at that point, the downward departure would be mandatory in order to go below the guideline score sheet. As of right now, I believe you have the discretion to simply modify the sentence to whatever you feel is appropriate. Your Honor, the state does agree with that. However, I'd just like to make one quick response, if I could, um, in response to the fact that the state did not put on evidence counteracting. You argued otherwise just a second ago. You argued that the court, and that was why I asked the question, that the court was required to downwardly depart and to prove not only that it met the elements, but then that the court then chose to downwardly depart. If you're going to revoke and terminate his probation. Not that's if you're going distinction. to put him back. That's a that's a good distinction. I appreciate that. Yes, Your Honor. And Judge, may I just um, s say that in response to the defense's statements that the state did not put on any evidence in the event that the court would be revoking and terminating the defendant's probation about the downward departure, it is not the state's burden to prove a downward departure. It's the defense's burden to show competent and substantial evidence of the defendants required specialized treatment 
And additionally, I think I, be I believe that I said this before, but his being amenable to treatment is not just his willingness to do treatment. And the defense must meet all three of those prongs, not just one of them, in order for the court to find that a downward departure can exist. And Your Honor, I know that the defense put on a lot of evidence of the defendant's family and the fact that his family has issues and he's a good businessman and a good dad, but again, those are not reasons to find a downward departure. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. So the court will take a short break. We'll come back.
here on a sentencing on a violation of probation case number 18 CF 738 the original plea agreement that was made had eight charges seven of those were dismissed including BUI manslaughter and operating a vessel under influence those were all dismissed there was a single charge of vessel homicide this is a second degree felony you well know very serious maximum penalty of 15 years the state uh, offered and the defendant accepted a plea agreement uh, in which there was an adjudication of guilt on this single count and five years of probation no incarcerative sentence within months of entering this plea agreement and being placed on probation not one but two violations with new law charges um, were uh, entered and in a violation of probation were found uh, that both of those were valid basis of uh, violation of probation As a result of these two uh, violations, the court's going to revoke and terminate probation. Based upon that, the court is required to evaluate any downward departures that are cited. There was one that was argued by the defense. The court finds that this defense did not carry the day improving the necessary three requirements for a downward departure uh, that was chosen uh, and further uh, if if they were proven the courts not would not uses discretionary authority to exercise a downward departure the court is not however going to sentence the full measure but there is a minimum that the courts required to do in the absence of a downward departure of 114.3 months obviously the defendant would get credit for time served and that's the court sentence here today your honor can i get some time to make my preparations at home and my mortgages and my my what business you by preparation can you give me 30 to 60 days before i, I don't think that's the court's purview actually the court's making sense today Based. your honor uh based on the score sheet that i have i believe the minimum mandatory is 118.8 months with the six vop points what i'm looking at is 114. you want to come up here and look at it? it's the one signed by the judge at the time both counsel come up that's what i'm looking at if i'm mistaken give me the That, that's the score sheet from the from the initial this is the oh with the with the additional with the violation okay okay the court would the court would acknowledge that so based on the, the the new score sheet with the violations that were previously um, ordered uh, it's 118 118.8 has this been filed previously counsel has this score sheet been filed previously? No, Your Honor. I don't believe so. Okay. So the court is in agreement, not that the Senate, but in agreement this is the proper score sheet? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Very good. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Your Honor.
go ahead and give you the...
Okay, we'll begin with Alvarado. Judge. Justina Turner for Max Alvarado. Judge, we are here on a, um, for a hearing on a motion to compel that I had filed in, re in with regards to a 911 call that we suspect existed at one time. In response to my motion to compel, the state attorney, uh, Ms. Lyles, did provide for me the name of a witness um, in Panama City that may have more information. She's actually the dispatch officer or dispatch agent who would have presumably made that 911 call. Right. So what I'd like to do is continue today's hearing to give me time to depose this Denying, actually, they're saying we don't know anything, or, or what are you? I'm not. I'm not clear what, what's being requested. The state's position is that we have provided the 911 calls in the case. Now we did just recently okay, provide. So that if you say this is what I've got, what what are you asking the court to do? To I don't understand. That's why I'm unclear about what the motion to compel discovery is. So, we, by reviewing the CAD notes from this uh, dispatch officer, she references substantive statements by the alleged victim stating that the victim told her that the defendant, my client, made her take a shower, made her take her clothes off before right. she left the house. Right. But that's the only time in the entire record that any such statement has been made. It's highly impeachable. It's relevant and impeachable because this woman, this alleged victim, just about an hour before the dispatch call was no, no, no. made. I, I understand the substantive basis, but I, I don't, I, are they withholding something from you? Well, I, I wouldn't know that, Your Honor. That's not. But they've told you, I, I'm just unclear, they've told you we've given up everything we have. You can't compel test. You can't compel something that somebody doesn't have. That's what I, I'm unclear. Are you saying they're not giving? They're hiding the ball, or I, it's what no. I'm not clear about. If there's, I don't know I the totally answer. agree with you. There's relevant information. We should not have a hearing over that. That's what I'm unclear about. What what is the issue that you're asking the court to do? Well, so I. When I filed my motion to compel, I did not have this woman's, uh, she was not listed as a witness, and now she is. So now I do have more information at my disposal that I can further the pretrial discovery process with. Now, depending on what I learn, I may, I may change my, my belief. As it appears now, it appears that either the victim will be impeached or this woman is making things up because... That's the only, those are the only two possibilities for this. And it's highly damaging to the defendant. I have to file this. I have to perfect the record. There will be, I, I would imagine, and it depends on what I learn. I don't know today, but I would imagine it, I may be asking for relief in the future before trial. I may be asking for a, um, instruction on a presumption that the jury may find missing evidence to be favorable to the defendant. Uh, I, I may be asking for this CAD note to be admitted um, without... I just was unclear what you're asking the court to do because you're asking the, the state to provide something, and I understood, even from your motion, the state to say, we've given you, we don't have it. I, that's what I'm just unclear about. It's not like you... you, you Anyway, I just was, I'm still unclear what you're what you're asking for, but you can proceed. And it's I mean at this point, Your Honor, you know, without my filing the motion, it really wouldn't have been clear on the record that they had provided everything. I am thankful for Miss Lyle's response because she does say that we've been given everything that she does have. So I don't believe that she's withholding anything. No, but I still think we need to find answers as to why there's a witness stating things that are not being stated at any other point and that are helpful to the defendant in a, in a first degree felony case. So I need to get, to, I need to get to the bottom of it. 
I wouldn't be doing my job if I wasn't. I'm not saying you're not doing anything improper. I, I just didn't understand what you're asking the court to do. So what are we doing today? Today we're continuing. State? No objection. Sir. Okay. When, when do you want to, um, how long? Your Honor, I would ask just to refile a notice of hearing after, at, at some point after I am able to depose this um, this witness. Okay, so we'll just continue it but not reset it? Yes, sir. With okay. the, this uh, motion hearing. Okay. Would be pre next week if you wanted to get to the next pre I think we've already done it. So this is the case where the state's um, FDLE lab analyst, Emily Simon, we had had a um, We'd asked for a three cycle continuance last time because she was unservable for a depot that I had scheduled, I think, for May 3rd. She's on Florida medical leave. And so she won't be back until sometime in July. So we had already asked the, the court to schedule to um, continue the pretrial until sometime after July because we won't be able to depose her until August, it looks like. I think the court had put it on for June 27th as the next pretrial, but. I actually have a conflict with that date, so I would be happy to uh, ask for a continuance past that date, Your Honor. Judge, given the need for this additional deposition and the deposition of the FDLE analyst. Um, okay. I mean, I'm always reluctant to, to continue out that far, but this is a unique situation and all, and it's a serious case. I don't even have the next one. What is the next? But that's without, August 22nd is without inmates? Okay. August 22nd, 9 a.m. Thank you so much, Judge. Okay. May I be excused? Sure, sure. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Andre. Your Honor, may I approach? You may, sir. Your Honor, take care of DeAndre's before the court on case 20 CF 1077. Your Honor, this is a, a little unique in that uh, Ms. DeAndre has already entered a plea and was waiting for sentencing. That was done back in May, uh, May 10th of last year. Um, but with um, agreement with the state that I provide the court, at this time she would withdraw her previously entered no, no contest plea and would enter a new plea uh, today as charged in count one, she would plead no contest to the lesser included offense of manslaughter. Count two would be dismissed and count three, she would plead no contest to the lesser included offense of accessory to second degree felony murder, a second degree felony. The agreement with the state is that, first of all, sentence will be imposed at a later date, uh, but the sentence would be six years, Department of Corrections with credit for all time served followed by nine years of probation. She would pay standard court costs and testify truthfully at any proceedings regarding Eric Dorsey, and there would be restitution if applicable. She would also be adjudicated guilty. The pre-sentence report will be waived, and for his honor's uh, knowledge, the proffer agreement was already filed with the court back on May 10th, the 2021. What? A proffer agreement. But what, how did this change from last time we were in the court? Because we were still waiting to be sentenced. Did we change? Was the plea agreement changed? Um, yes, sir. Sorry, Michelle Sandler for the state. Um, Your Honor, Ms. Williams, uh, her co-defendant, received a similar plea. Right. And my duty as Minister of Justice, Your Honor, I want to make sure that Ms. Williams got her back. 
Okay, very good. So we're still waiting as far as the, the as far as the sentence based on we're still waiting for the testimony. Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Okay. Miss is it DeAndre? Is that how you pronounce your name? Sorry. Ms. DeAndre, would you raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, the state's in agreement, obviously, based on what you just said, and yes. you're uh, in agreement on the score sheet as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So, Ms. DeAndre, I, I know you've been talking with your attorney. You've got an experienced defense attorney, um, but you've already pled previously, but they're they're basically changing the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of what's going on? Yes, sir. Okay. So actually, I, I think you're probably getting a little better deal, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So I just want to, again, make sure that you've, you're you satisfied, that you understand what's going on, yes, sir. and that you're in agreement. Yes, sir. Okay. So these changes that were made, you've gone over them with your attorney? I'm, I'm, I'm posing that as a question. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. I don't want to assume that, but I, I, I would assume that you've gone over this. And I see that you've signed the plea and sentencing agreement. You went over that with your attorney that lays out uh, what he just said as far as the, the, the final sentence to be imposed at a later time. And you, under, you do understand, uh, I'm sure you do, but I'm going to ask you to make sure you put it on the record. You do understand that this plea agreement is conditional, if you will, it doesn't use that term, upon you testifying. And you proffered certain things previously and whatnot. So if that doesn't happen, then we might come back and, and re-look at this plea agreement. Do you understand that? Yes, sir. Okay. And do you have any legal questions concerning this? Yes. Okay. And you understand that by entering this plea agreement, even though we're not sentencing today, you're entering this plea agreement, and it's, it's kind of, other than the sentencing, this is the final resolution of your case. Yes, we can't come back and, you know, before the sentencing, but, you know, a couple of weeks down the road and say, oh, I've changed my mind on this. Yes, and you understand you can't do that. Okay. Very good. And you're entering into this plea agreement freely and voluntarily. And after being able to obviously consult with your attorney. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your, your plea agreement. And uh, we'll... we'll uh, not reserved, but we'll, we'll uh, impose the sentence at a later time based upon, obviously, the, the conditional issues that are, have to be resolved before we do this. You all have a, a suggestion about when, when to do this? I mean, I don't know how. I think Ms. Hamlin may have a better idea in terms of how far out uh, Mr. Dorsey's place may go. Any sense for that? You want to come back on some type of a status or something? I, mean, I just want to make sure and put something on the books. Do we have another hearing scheduled in this case? This is no. no. Is. The status in June. Just to make sure we stay on track. I'll be fine. Okay. okay. So why don't we just come back? Um, why don't we come back uh, June thirtieth? We'll just have a status at that time. Yes, it'll be without subpoenas. It'll be in the morning. So we're just anticipated being a, a short here just to provide an update on the, on the sentence. And, and I just want to add, Your Honor, there, in addition to the, the agreement as far as the, the, the sentence um, changes from the previous plea, yes. there was also a, a change in terms of what she was pleading to. So. Um, right, the charges actually changed a little bit based the, on the plea. The charges were the same. It's just the, the one she's pleading to. That's right. In other words, the lesser included yes, changed sir. a little. Yes, sir. Yes. No, that's but, that's. But that plea is withdrawn and. Done. Yes. That plea you, went away. You understand that, man? That plea went away. Yes, and we're entering this anew and this replaces it in toto. Okay? Yes, sir. Very good. Thank Anything you, from the state that we're good? Okay. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Honor. May I be excused? You may. Thank you. Same for me, Your Honor. That concludes my business. May I be excused? Thank you. Thank you, sir.
I know we have a, <clears throat> we've got a VOP evidentiary. It's obviously going to take a little bit of time here this afternoon. The gin zone, and then we have um, several pleas. Um, is gin zone, what, what are we, uh, is that an evidentiary here today? That's it's a, a violation. It's an admission on the violation. It's a, it's, it's a plea? Yes, sir. Okay. So why don't we just do the four pleas? Um, three that were added, and then uh, we'll start with Ginson, and then we'll do the evidentiary here. I think that's that's what all we have this afternoon. Okay, so um, Kyle, is it is it Gene Gene What is it, Mister? That's I'm not quite sure the pronunciation correctly, but you're going to uh, bail me out. Jean Song. We'll ask. It looks French. Okay, well, we'll see. Your Honor. Yes. Thank you. Sir, how do you pronounce your last name? We were trying to figure that out. Janson, sir. Janson. So, your attorney's correct. French? Um, yes, sir. Oh, okay. Counsel? Yes, Your Honor. David Snell for Mr. Janson. He's before you today in 2021 CF 2251 and 21 CF 693 for both violations of probation. This time he'd like to admit the violations. Understanding his probation would be revoked and terminated. He'd be ordered to serve six months in the county jail concurrent of a hundred dollars cost of prosecution in both cases, $150 cost of defense and 2251 and, and a $100 cost of defense in 693 and the cost would be payable within 90 days if not to collections at that time. Okay. Sir, would you raise your right hand? Let me just ask you a couple questions. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth so I hope you got? It. Yes, sir. So on your on your notes counsel, you say admit VOP. I assume and you probably need to clarify this. You're admitting both VOPs. Yes, sir. So on, on. Um, what, what is the case number? Because twenty twenty one CF, put the full case twenty one CF, two two five one and twenty one CF six nine three. Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, for each of those, we're revoking and terminating probation, and for each of those to run concurrent, six months Okaloosa County Jail yes, credit sir. for time sir. Is that yes, correct? Sir. So is that your understanding of what the plea agreement is? Yes, sir. With credit Johnson? for time served, right? You definitely get credit for time served. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And uh, in including that, you've got a, a number of court fees uh, that will uh, be paid within 90 days. Uh, would that be within 90 days from now or 90 days after they get out of jail? Usually it's after you get out. On release. Yes, okay. Sir. And then if, if not, it would go to collections. Again, is that your understanding of what the, the agreement yes, is? Yes, sir. State's in agreement on that? Yes, sir. Okay. And you understand that by entering into this plea agreement, Mr. Johnson, that, that this is a final resolution of these matters? Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, by revoking and terminating probation, when you get out, you don't have to be on probation anymore. You're done with it. Okay? Right? Is that your understanding? Yes, sir. You believe you, you had all your questions answered about kind of how this all this work all the legal questions yes sir everything is you're satisfied with your legal representation uh, yes sir. what this is okay and you understand this is all free and voluntary yes sir no nobody threatened of course you to get you to no, enter sir. into this okay very good based upon your testimony the court will accept the plea and I do see that you've signed the plea and sentencing agreement you went over that with your attorney uh, yes sir your names and, uh, 
on that as well. So the court will accept a plea and sentencing agreement with the six months of Calusa County credit for time served on both VOPs uh, to be served concurrently, not stacked on top of one another, plus the relevant court cost, etc. 90 days after you get out of jail to pay it, then it goes to collections um, and your term, your probation will be revoked and terminated. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Carlos Gant. Good afternoon, Judge Jennifer Flowers, um, counsel for Mr. Carlos Gant. Uh, may I approach, Your Honor? You may. Thank you. Would you just go ahead and walk through the the the, the sentencing agreement? Yes. Um, this is Mr. Carlos Gant here on case number 4621CF1586. Uh, Mr. Gant is pleading, uh, is, is um, withdrawing his previously entered plea of not guilty and entering a plea of no contest today. In this case, to the on count one, to the lesser included charge of possession of a controlled substance, a third degree felony, the sentence being an adjudication of guilt, 16.275 months, Department of Corrections, with credit for all time served, $514 of court costs, $100, $150 of cost of defense, and a $100 cost of prosecution, and as charged on count two, a misdemeanor, possession of drug paraphernalia, and just adjudicate in time served on that. Very good. Mr. Gant, would you raise your right hand, sir? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court as the truth, nothing but the truth to help you God? I just want to ask you a couple questions to make sure you understand what this plea agreement is and you're agreeing to it voluntarily. You heard your attorney state the, the terms of, of your plea agreement, um, possession of a controlled substance, you're uh, agreeing to an adjudication of guilt, 16.275 months in the Department of Corrections, you will get credit for all time served. And then... Uh, adjudication of guilt on the misdemeanor, the, pos the possession of paraphernalia, credit for time served. So that's uh, that won't add any additional time. Is that your understanding of what the agreement is, yes, plus sir. the cost? Have you had all your legal questions answered of your attorney? And you, I see that you've signed the back of, of the, uh, the plea and sentencing agreement. Did you go over that with the, your attorney? Make sure you a lot of a lot of details in these things. I just want to make sure you've been able to read through and ask all the questions you have. States in agreement? Yes, sir. And states in agreement as to the score sheet as yes. well? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Very good. So you understand this is a final resolution, Mr. Gant? This puts this to bed and... Uh, you are waiving the right to go to a trial and all those important constitutional. Do you understand they've been able to make sure that's what you want to do here today? Yes. Okay, very good. Based upon all that, the court will accept uh, Mr. Gant's uh, plea agreement and sentence to the 16.275 months in DOC, credit for time served, plus the other issues that were uh, outlined by the defense as well as that are contained in the plea and sentencing agreement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Crystal Harris. Your Honor, may I approach? Thank you. Would you identify, would you identify the cases and walk through the plea agreement, please? Yes, Your Honor. Jennifer Flowers here for Crystal Harris. And case numbers 21CF2257, 21CF2795. Um, where uh, the defendant in this case, Mr. Ms. Harris, would like to withdraw her previously entered plea of not guilty and enter a plea of no contest. And 21CF2275, as charged, um, 
The sentence being as follows in count one, adjudicate nine months Okaloosa County Jail with credit for all time served, concurrent to 21 CF 2795, 515 court costs, 150 cost of defense and $100 cost of prosecution. Count two, adjudicate and time served, that being a, a misdemeanor. So it'd be adjudicate 60 days time served. Um, in 21 CF 2795, she'll be pleading to the lesser included charge of burglary of an unoccupied structure, a third degree felony. Um, and the, the sentence being a concurrent nine months Okaloosa County Jail with credit for all time served, concurrent to the previously uh, announced case 21 CF 2275, an additional four, $415 in court cost, $100. $100 cost of defense and $100 cost of prosecution. Very good. And the state's in agreement? Yes, sir, and with the score sheet as well. Thank you. So, Ms. <coughs> Harris, would you please raise your right hand? Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth and nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it? Yes, sir. I just need to ask you a couple of questions to make sure that um, make sure you understand what you're pleading to and make sure that you're in agreement. Okay. Yes, sir. You can put down your hand. So you heard your attorney state the terms of your plea agreement, the, the core of which is an adjudication of guilt, uh, one on the possession of paraphernalia and the driving on a suspended. Uh, well, the, the driving on a suspended would be adjudication of guilt time served, but the, uh, the two um, felony provisions, the possession of a controlled substance and the lesser included burglary of an unoccupied structure that's down from burglary of an unoccupied dwelling that's so a lesser includes a lesser charge that they're charging you with those are both going to be an adjudication of guilt nine months in the Oklahoma county jail with credit for time served they'll be concurrent they'll run together they're not going to be stacked on top of one another is that your understanding of what the terms of this agreement is yes sir and have you been able to go over i see you signed the the last page of the plea and sentencing agreement have you been able to go over this with your attorney make sure you had all your questions answered regarding this plea agreement yes sir okay you understand that by entering this agreement you're waiving the right to go to a trial contesting all this you have all those rights to confront witnesses etc yes, you believe sir. that's in your best interest yes sir Nobody threatened or coerced you to get you to enter into this plea? No. Nobody promised you anything other than what we just discussed here today? No, sir. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your uh, plea and sentencing agreement and sentence you to the, uh, with an adjudication of guilt, uh, to nine months in the Oklahoma County Jail credit for time served. And both of these will be concurrent with one another, along with the other court costs um as stated in the thing or are we gonna uh, upon release 90 days um to pay the costs uh and fees your then honor, go would, to collections your honor i would ask for six months uh for her to pay once she's released um give her a chance to pay before that goes to collection i'm okay. the state judge if you will do me one favor and make that little hand write that in there just so we can do that because i, I want to make sure and get that right so is that you understand that, ma'am? Is that yes, Your Honor. are you good with that? Okay. It won't be. There'll be no probation when you get out. Thank you very much. No probation. Okay. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Would you like a copy? Yeah. And Brittany Way. May I approach, Your Honor? Thank you. Your Honor, Jennifer Flowers for Brittany Way in case number 4622CF707. Um, Ms. Way is uh, withdrawing her previously entered plea of uh, not guilty and entering a plea of no contest as charged. 
and 22 CF 707. On count one, the sentence shall be adjudicate guilty, 30 days, Okaloosa County Jail with credit for all time served, 515 court costs, $100 cost of prosecution, 150 cost of defense, and court reserves rest, um, jurisdiction on restitution for 120 days to determine the amount of restitution for a payee. Very good. Ms. Way, would you raise your right hand? I just need to ask you a couple questions. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth? Nothing but the truth, so help you God. You heard your attorney state the terms of the plea agreement. Is that your understanding of the plea agreement? Yes, sir. And are you in agreement with that? Yes, sir. State's in agreement as well? Yes, sir. Score sheet as well? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, this is pretty pretty straightforward. Adjudication of guilt, 30 days in the county jail. You will get credit for all time served. And, and then you've got court cost, etc. The one little thing that's a little unusual the you reserve a jurisdiction for the determination of the amount of restitution and pay so we're not making a ruling on that today basically saying states got to file something within 120 days if they don't file anything they can't pursue it if they do file something you'll have your attorney will be able to work with you and you can contest it and argue about it yes. so so that's we're just not dealing with that today we're just saying hey I'll we'll deal with that in the future 120, but, the, but that won't change. No matter what happens with that restitution, this is going to be in place. Okay, so you can start serving your time, get through with that, and, uh, and get out. So, uh, so let me just make sure I understand. You've been able to go over all this with your attorney, ask all your legal questions. Yes. You're, you're good with that? Okay. Very good. And you understand this is the final resolution of your case? Yes, sir. Okay. Very good. Based upon that, the court will accept your plea agreement, adjudicate guilt, 30 days in the county jail, credit for time served. And the, um, again, with the court costs, what are we looking at? Normally we do at least 90 days after you get out to... If I could, yeah. Could I again ask for six months? Um, would you like okay. me to write it in for her to get that paid? So you'll have six months. If, it, if not, it'll go to collections. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Judge. Would you add that to this? Yes, sir. And I'll, and I'll That's all right. I'm sorry? Yeah. That's all right. Just so. She, she still has a VOP pending, I think. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for telling me. I, I was unaware of that. We were kind of confused, too. Well, I, I, I didn't want to make some misstatement that this was the final resolution of all your cases if it's not. Okay. Where's the VOP? Is it this county? It's Walton County. Okay. Okay. So that, ma'am, come up back up to the podium. I just want to make sure and ask you. So thank you, uh, probation, for alerting me to that. So just been alerted. There's another case in Walton County. I just want you to be sure. You're not, we're not resolving that one today. Right. Right? Yes. And you're good there. That's going to be dealt with at a later time. Yes. Does that affect the plea in this case? You still want to do this plea? Yes. Okay. Just wanted to make sure. Okay. Thank you. We'll tell her you, what, what we're going to do. Okay. Thank Sounds good. No, I appreciate that. It's an important point of clarification. Thank you very much. Okay. So, the... Uh, Final cases are is uh, DeAndre English. State ready to proceed? Yes, sir. Defense ready? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. State may make an opening statement if you wish. Okay. State would reserve comments for the end of testimony, Judge. Okay. Would you just identify the case for me? Sure. 
This is DeAndre English, the violation of probation, case number 20 CF 1322, on probation for a grand theft auto. Counsel for the defense, do you wish to make any opening? No, Your Honor, we reserve as well. State may call its first witness. The state would call um, Jonathan Johnson. right hand sir do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth nothing but the truth so help you god please be seated counsel you may proceed you state your name for the record jonathan johnson mr johnson where were you living on july 14th 2021 at 1638 east first avenue who lived at the home with you deandre miranda and the Randy and his grandpa and Derek. Okay, and when you say DeAndre, who are you talking about? DeAndre English. And was anybody else at the home related to him or in a relationship with him? That would be Bobby's sister, Miranda. Um, did anything unusual happen on July 14, 2021? Unusual? What were you doing that night? I was hanging out. Where were you hanging out? In the backyard. And what were you doing in the backyard? Just chilling, hanging out, smoking a cigarette. Who were you with? Robert. Robert who? Russo. Um, did you notice anything unusual while you were in the backyard with Robert? No. Quite late. And then... Sir, would you do me a favor and slide that microphone up closer to you and make sure and talk into it? Yes, sir. Thank you. Go ahead, counsel. Uh, did you know where DeAndre English was at the time? No, ma'am. Did you see someone else when you were in the backyard other than Robert? Besides the two guys that came into the backyard? No, tell me about that. Who came into the backyard? There was two males that walked in the backyard. They they walked, they kind of like walked, jogged, and as soon as they got to the backyard, they, they both raised their guns up and asked for my stuff. Did you recognize them? No. Did you all... know either of them? No. Did you recognize their voices? No. What did you do? I, I'm sorry, you said there was a gun involved? Yes, ma'am. And what did you do when they said give you, give them all your stuff? I stood up, grabbed my bong, and then I walked to the left, and as soon as I started heading towards the left, that's when the males were shot. What happened when the gun was fired? We both, both me and Robert, immediately ran inside for cover. Were you injured? Yes. How? Got shot in the neck, and then the other bullet ended up in my leg, yeah, above my knee. Did the two men that came into your backyard get anything from you? No, ma'am. Were you able to see if Robert was injured? Yes, I saw he was injured after I checked myself for injuries. And where where was he when you saw he was injured? At first, he was in the back of the living room, in the, the back of the living room of the apartment, and then afterwards, both me and him ended up towards the entrance of the front of the building, towards the front door. I was right across from the bathroom on the first floor, and then Robert was in, in like, the kitchen hallway. And were you able to tend to your own injuries? For the most part, until I had to call somebody down to help me further, to help me out. Who did you call down? Randy. Um, were you treated for your injuries that day? Yes, ma'am. How were you treated? Treated the, I had, besides the, both the neighbors that came into the building to help secure the towel onto my neck, I had the ambulance guy come inside and he stuck a bandaid on me. Were you taken to the hospital? Yes, ma'am. How were you taken? Life flighted. You know how long you were at the hospital? 
for maybe 12 hours. Hours at least before noon the next day. Uh, do you know what kind of treatment you received at the hospital? Uh, treatment, they didn't really uh, give me any treatment. They just x-rayed me to make sure there was nothing wrong privately with me. Did you receive any stitches? The stitches didn't happen until out of, out of patient care. Until that's when I had to rehab them, remove the bullet that went through my neck and ended up in the back of my shoulder. They removed that bullet out. Do you still have a bullet in you? Yes, ma'am. It's in my leg. How long had you known DeAndre English? For probably about the whole time I was there. So it was probably maybe six months, half a year, a little bit over half a year. So would you have been able to recognize his voice? Yeah. And what about his face? Would you have been able to recognize his face? Yeah. I don't have any further questions. Also for the defense, do you have any questions? <clears throat> Mr. Johnson, um, I wanted to make sure I understood what you had just said. Um, you indicated when these two individuals arrived in the backyard, um, they approached you and the other um, individual that was in the backyard with you, your friend, yeah. And they both raised their guns up? Yeah. So it's your recollection that there are two guns involved in this matter? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you indicated that um, when they accosted you and demanded money, that you stood up and you... They never demanded money. They just required me to give them all their stuff. Okay. When they phrased that as, give me all your stuff, um, you stood up and grabbed your, your bong. Was that accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, would it be fair to say that you're smoking marijuana throughout yes. the evening, just recreationally? Yes. Okay. Um, how long do you think that you're smoking? I'm talking about that day. Sure. Uh, for that day, I've only had like one edible. It was a pot brownie. Okay. Um, that evening, when this incident occurred, were you smoking a blunt or? No blunts at the time. It was just the pot edible. Um, you indicated that you had resided with Mr. English, my client, um, for a period of about six months up to a year. You're familiar with his face, familiar with his voice. Is that accurate? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, and you testified that you didn't recognize anyone that no, was in front no. of you with the gun. Okay. No. I don't have any further questions. Johnson, can you identify the defendant, DeAndre English? Yeah. You see him here in court? Yes, sir. Can you um, identify him by an article of clothing? Yeah. What was he wearing? You were talking about that day? No, today, in court. Orange jumpsuit. I don't have any other questions. Is the witness excused? Uh, subject to recall, Judge. If you'll just hang around just a little bit longer. You don't have to step in. Judge, I apologize for not doing this earlier, but I would like to invoke the rule. Very good. The rule of sequestration has been in invoked. So if you, and I'm going to ask the attorneys to identify any potential witnesses, if you are a potential witness, either a witness or a potential witness to this trial here today, I would ask that uh, two things. One, that you uh, wait outside. And secondly, that you not talk about what you're going to testify to and certainly not talk about with anybody who comes out what they testified to. The purpose of the rule of sequestration is to make sure to, to encourage the personal knowledge of the witness. So we want the witness to, to testify as to what 
they have personal knowledge of, not what somebody else might be testifying to. So that's the purpose of it. The uh, attorneys have the responsibility to make sure that any witness that is not here in the courtroom, that you pass this information on to them so that they will be able to abide by it as well. So anybody who's a potential witness, asking you now, leave the uh, exit the courtroom. We will call you as soon as we can. Swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so you got. Yes, sir. Please be seated. I'm trying to speak right into that mic so we can all hear you. Counsel for the state, you may inquire. Yes, sir. Please state your name for the record. Robert Russell. And do you know the defendant DeAndre English? No, I did not know him. I've heard his name at the house, but I didn't know him. Heard his name at what house? At to Jonathan's house. And how did you know Jonathan? It was one of his smoking buddies. Were you with Jonathan Johnson on the night of July 14th, 2021? Yes. What were you doing that night? Smoking a cigarette about to head home because I was giving my roommates time to enjoy their married life. So I was hanging out with one of my buddies. And where were you hanging out with him? On the back porch. Backyard. Yes. No objection, Judge. No objection. The court will admit states exhibits one and two. States exhibit two. This is the backyard of, and this is. Um, a little bit to the right of the picture, there is a little gate, and that's where two men with guns uh, fired one. One went through me and into JoJo's leg, and then the other one went into JoJo's throat. Can you tell me where you were on the night of July 14th, 2021? I was sitting right in front of this door. Um, Right in front of this door. Um, I saw somebody kind of like seemingly like walking, but not really just walking, like maybe speed walking or something. Uh, and did and you I, hear them say anything? I couldn't tell because they were wearing mask and muffled. Did, were you able to recognize either of them? No, I don't really go out much. And how did you respond to the two men coming into the yard? Uh, I was stunned for a second and then realized I got shot and then ran inside and sat down on the couch and waited for Jonathan to get back and then I ended up into the kitchen and waiting for um, one of Jonathan's roommates to come downstairs. Do you know who came downstairs? Uh, 
I can't remember. Oh, it was a very traumatic night. Were you taken to the hospital? Yes, I was life flighted at the ballpark. What kind of treatment did you have to receive at the hospital? Um, they had to cut me open, take out my gallbladder, help fix my stomach, remove my appendix. Um, I did not get any stitches or staples. I had to heal naturally from the uh, inside out. How long were you at the hospital? About two weeks. Okay, was anything taken from you? Um, no. During this incident? They were in after me. Wrong place. I don't have any other questions. Mr. Russo, just to make sure I understood what you just said, um, you indicated that two men with guns um, entered the backyard and approached y'all. Yes. Um, was that guns plural? Yep, there was two guns. I couldn't see the first gun because the second I saw a gun, I kind of just froze. It stunned me. I don't, I did not expect that. And just so I'm not making assumptions, the, the guns were in separate... In separate hands, yes. In separate hands. So one person had a gun, another person had a gun. Yes. Um, and you didn't recognize anyone? No, because I don't really go out. I go to work, I go home. With respect to these two individuals that entered the yard, would it be fair to say that you could not identify them? No, because I really don't know who they were. I just saw two guys, one was in a hoodie, and I couldn't really tell which hoodie was which. I know they both were in a hoodie, but it was dark and wear glasses, and they're kind of old. I have no further questions. Anything else, please say? No, sir. Not from this witness at this time. Thank you, sir. You may step down. Is Thank the you. witness need to... Uh, you can stay, and if you stay, not here, but if you'll sit outside and wait in case we need to recall. Thank you. That's Adrian Bloodsworth. Raise your right hand and face the judge. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so I hope you got it. Yes. Please be seated. Counsel for the state. Yes, sir. Mr. Bloodsworth, please state your name for the record. Adrian Bloodsworth. Where were you living at July 14th, 2021? I was bouncing around, but I was staying with my baby mom. Did you know DeAndre English? Not personally. Um, had you ever spoken with him? No. Were you with him on the night of July 14th? Yes. Um, did you have a vehicle at the time? Yes. What kind of vehicle did you have? It was a four key Spectra. And had you ever been to DeAndre English's residence prior to July 14th? No. Did you go on the evening of July 14th? Yes. Why did you do that? Um, well, there was a robbery that was planned. Who planned the robbery? DeAndre English. Was DeAndre English going to go to the residence for the robbery? Yes. And what was his part? Um, he planned it. And when you say he planned it, um, who was part of this conversation? 
What conversation? About planning the robbery. Me, him, and Jeremiah Haynes. Okay, and where did the conversation take place? At Haynes' residence. Um, did you know the people that were going to be robbed? No. Were you familiar with the residence where the robbery was going to occur? No. Was Jeremiah Haynes aware of the residence that was going to be robbed? What do you mean by aware? Um, did he, had he been there to your knowledge? Um, no, nah, I couldn't say. Did he know the people that were going to be robbed? I couldn't say. How did you find out um, that there was a robbery being suggested? Haynes told me. Where did Haynes tell you that? At my house. When did you first see Haynes on July 14th? When he came to my house and told me about it. Was he alone when he came to your house? Yes. Okay. Did you meet up with anybody else? Uh, we met up with uh, English at Haynes' house. How did you get to Haynes' house? My car. Um, did you hear DeAndre English say anything about the robbery? Yes. What did he say? He said there, there was two white boys' house that would be an easy lit. Did he say whether or not he knew those boys? No. He, well, he said he stayed with them. Who was going to go commit the robbery? Me and Haynes. Why was it you and Haynes were going to go? Because he knew the people. They knew his face. Um, how did you get to the residence where the robbery was going to occur? My car. Had you given anybody else permission to drive your car that night? No. Okay. Um, who all was in your car when you went to the residence? Me, English, and Haynes. All right, and then who, who got out of the vehicle? Me and Haynes. And where did the two of you go? To the backyard of the house. How did you know to go to the backyard? Because that's where we were told to go. Who told you that? English. Okay, and where was English while you and Haynes went to the backyard? In the car. And what happened when you and Haynes went to the backyard? What do you mean? Um, what did you and Haynes do when you went to the backyard? When we went into the backyard, Haynes started shooting, shot me and shot everybody else. Did Haynes say anything to the two people in the backyard? He told me to give them their stuff. Did you see what the two people were doing? Um, I didn't really pay attention because it was all happened fast. I do know they were sitting on the back porch there. After Haynes shot you and the two other people, what did Haynes do? They took off. And what did you do? I, they left me behind, so I didn't know what to do, and I ended up bleeding out on the ground. Did you go back and look for your car? They left in okay, Did you see your car again? Yeah, I was laying on the ground, and. They had pulled up next to me and looked at me and then sped off. Did you say anything to them when they pulled up? No. Nope. And who was in the car that you saw? Haynes and English. Did they stop and help? No. Did you later find out where the vehicle was after that? Yeah, they told me. Police had told me it was found, I guess, on railroad tracks somewhere, abandoned. When the police recovered your car, did you um, allow them to search your vehicle? Yeah.
Did you speak with the police that night? What do you mean? Um, when you, after you'd been shot? No, they had took me to the hospital and took me into surgery. I didn't speak with them until a couple days after surgery. Is that me? Oh yeah, yeah, I recognize that. Yeah. No objection, Judge. No objection. Court will admit state's exhibit three. Um, I was laying on the ground after the police had found me get shot. All right. Did you, when you first talked to the police? Um, did you tell them that you were going to be part of a robbery? No. Why not? I don't know. I just made up the story. Had you spoken with, um, your girlfriend at the time? No. Not until I got to the hospital. Not until I got to the hospital. Have you spoken with either DeAndre English or Jeremiah Haynes about this incident since you've been arrested? No. Who was driving your car when they when your car was driven off while you were asking for help? I believe, um, English. Any other questions? That's pushed across. Yes, sir. Do you remember, Mr. Uh, Blesworth, we took a deposition not too long ago. Um, you indicated at that time that you had told law enforcement one story. Um, that subsequently changed. You, you told them another version of events. Is yes. that accurate? And do you recall saying in the deposition that during our deposition, that was the third version? Yes, the first yes. version had nothing to do with the robbery, nor did the second. Okay. The third version is is what you discussed during the deposition. Um, is this the same as that, or is this another version? What do you mean? Is this the same version of, of events, or is this something different? The same. <clears throat> Let me ask you about that incident. Um, you're saying that Mr. English um, planned this. In your testimony here today, you stated that Mr. Haynes approached you with this idea first. Is that accurate? In depositions, I stated that Haynes came to me and approached me and said, English has his plan to go rob somebody. We'll go to his residence and talk about it. And that's the same thing I'm stating now. Okay. So, so you first heard about the robbery from Mr. Haynes? Yes. Okay. And then you went to Mr. Haynes' residence where you're stating that you met up with Mr. English. Yes. Okay. Um, and then there are three of you in the car. Yes. Um, just three? Was there not another person? No. There wasn't a Dominique Wilkes also in the vehicle? No. Okay. <clears throat> you and Mr. Haynes approached the backyard, hopped the fence, 
and then approached these two uh, people, Mr. Johnson, and Mr. Russo. Um, did you have a gun? No. Okay. Who had the gun? Haynes. And Mr. Haynes was the only person with a gun? Yes. You gave law enforcement permission to search your vehicle? Yes. You stated that you were on the floor. Um, in your words, you said you are bleeding out um, on the ground. And in fact, I believe that one of the, the photographs that you just identified was yourself laying on the ground. Um, you made a statement saying that when the vehicle came around, your vehicle, that you believed Mr. English was was driving it. Did you actually see Mr. English driving the vehicle? The way it was dark, I seen him in the car, but I seen people in the in the front, the driver's seat and the passenger seat. But the way they were both leaning over looking at me, I couldn't tell which one was which, but I believe I'm certain it was English. Was there anybody in the back seat? No, sir. Okay. So you're certain it was Mr. English, but you're not, you didn't see Mr. English? Did I did. Be? Okay. <clears throat> You're testifying here today um, against Mr. English. What are you receiving in benefit for this testimony? Nothing. Nothing? That I know of. That you know of. You're not anticipating a positive result as a result of um, testifying against Mr. English? I mean, yeah. Okay. So there's a benefit to you to provide testimony at this time. Would that be fair to say? Yeah. I actually don't have any further questions. Anything else? Not, not Where or affirm the information you're about to provide this court is the truth, nothing but the truth, so help you guys. That's where. Please be seated. State your name for the record. Michael Tingle. Crestview Police Department. How long have you worked there? Uh, seven and a half years. What was your position there on July 14th, 2021? Investigator. Is that your current position? Yes, ma'am. On July 14th, 2021, did you become aware of a robbery or a ticket robbery? The, it initially came out as a shooting. Mm -hmm. Yes. And did you respond? Yes, ma'am. Where did you go? I went to 1638 East First Avenue. And who did you meet with there? Uh, the officers on scene. I met with the uh, initial case officer, which was Officer Chisholm, uh, Major Ray Harp, and Investigator Daniels. Um, were the victims of the shooting still on scene? No. Did you know where they were? At Fort Walton Beach Medical Center. During was this, uh, were you the case officer? 
I was the lead investigator. Lead investigator. And during the course of your investigation, did you speak with the victims on this case? I spoke with uh, Mr. Johnson and uh, Mr. Bloodsworth. Mr. Russo was uh, interviewed by Investigator Garrett. When did you first develop a suspect? So when we first developed a suspect, it was based off of a description or based off of a nickname that was provided to invest or now Investigator Chisholm, back then Officer Chisholm, of a nickname of Draco uh, was involved uh, with Adrian Bloodworth's side. Um, and from there, we started getting more interviews done with Mr. Bloodsworth. Um, and a uninvolved party was briefly detained during the incident um, and provided a description and a, pl a place of employment for a Draco. And who first gave you the name Draco? Uh, Officer Chisholm provided me the name, and it was provided to her by uh, Bloodsworth. And how did um, how did you who did you link the name Draco to? DeAndre English. Were you um, able to get information from Adrian Bloodsworth? Yes. And did you find another suspect during your investigation? Yes. Uh, Adrian Bloodsworth provided me with the name of, um, I believe he said Jeremiah was the name he gave me. And did you find a Jeremiah connected to this case? Yes. Uh, we conducted, myself and Investigator Garrett spoke with Bloodsworth's um, mother and stepfather who provided more information um, and it was found to believe or found to be that it was Jeremiah Haynes Ashton. Did you meet with Jeremiah Haynes Ashton on this case? Yes, uh, a few days after the incident we were able to develop probable cause based off of a consented search um, where Jeremiah's or yeah Jeremiah's ID was found inside of uh, Mr. Bloodsworth's car. Um, we developed probable cause for Haynes Ashton, he was taken into custody and a post Miranda interview was conducted with him by myself and Investigator Garrett. Where was that interview taken? The interview was taken at the Crestview Police Department. Exhibit four, Madam Clerk. You had three exhibits. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. Um, for states, is it for investigation? Um, we'd like to publish, Judge. What is this? This is the interview taken of co-defendant Jeremiah Haynes at the jail. Okay.
take just a brief recess so we can get this up. You will just call me and I will use it. Okay. I think last time I had to plug it in up here. Wow. Mr. Barry. I need to see you up here. Output on this? Um, okay. okay. I, I just plugged that one you in got, because I got a little. It's, it's being confusing. Okay. That, that's all. Right. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> Try it again. Four or five. Start coming just to see if we got audio.
Thank you. Yes. That's all I have. Thank Ready to proceed. This time for the interview with the my hands to make a bind up over the seat. The state's asking to admit it as state's exhibit four. No objection, Judge. Without objection, the court will admit state's exhibit four. I'm going to have a present guy in question. For the IRR, I want to be appointed for you for your charge for questioning. You said that. Do you understand? Yes, sir. If you answer any questions or make any statements without consulting a lawyer or without having a lawyer present during questioning, you will have the absolute right to stop answering questions or making any statements until you consult a lawyer or have a lawyer present during further questioning. Do you understand those rights? Yes, sir. Do you understand that you want a better idea? Yes, sir. With that, and then you wish to talk to us? Yes. Okay. Um, 
Basically, they plan. They plan what what happened there. You feel me? I didn't want to get involved because I told him I said I have a baby. You know what I'm saying? I ain't got time for that. I got two jobs and shit like that. So, so Draco and who planned it? Draco, um, Darius Williams. What was he about? Dynasty. And um. So, how was your name get brought into it? If you were at home? Because he wanted, he wanted me to go with him. But I knew 
you get feel you got your mother, you got your grandmother, she was just she was just put, getting done putting somebody out the house and all that time that night. You guys heard like she was getting my sister boyfriend out of the house. And I said, Okay, I'm gonna you feel me? I'm gonna stay on the strip. I walk my mom up to her boyfriend house and then police start swarming, you know what I'm saying? Swarming like we walking by fifties. So police swarming everywhere around the neighborhood and shit. So I was walking in, shoot, they probably got on any type of footage, but it was like four four police coming every dog, every street, like park, you know, you know, you know, you know. So I walked along home, she unlocked the door for me at the house. And uh, after that, shit, all we did was just sit there, smoke cigarettes, and we drunk. That was it. And then I heard I had to work, I went to the projects. I got where Adrian got shot and stuff. And I was like, damn, that shit. That shit went wrong. But I, I'm glad I didn't go, but obviously I got involved. You hear me? I got, my name got brought up in it because the simple fact I didn't want to go. And like, I just, I didn't want to, you know what I mean? At all. But I already know that y'all was going to come talk to me. How'd you know that? Because everybody, like, I'm at home, and then I go to, when I walk the baby to my baby mom's house and stuff, everybody tell me, like, so, so you know who shot Adrian? I said, no, I ain't know who shot Adrian, I wasn't even there. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, 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 you know I go to court today, they ain't saying nothing about it or nothing. So I'm like, what the fuck? I'm um, You yeah, go to court today? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The distribution of marijuana charge. I had nine grams. Then you charge. Well, it was supposed, supposed to be at, uh, you know what I'm saying? I just, like, I just had a new job. I was supposed to have a new job yesterday. My second job yesterday. I mean, you know, tomorrow. But, shit, I'm gonna have to. What are we gonna do about this shit? Little Caesars? God, I was working at Red Roof Camp. I was an employee there. You were doing uh, equipment? Yeah. So. So why would people leave contact in that song that's when they talk to you about the shooting? Um, because they, Adrian probably broke it up. I don't know what he said to him, but he been trying to get on the phone with me. And I told him, I said, I'm not talking to you because I'm not, I'm not trying to get involved with that shit. Like, his baby mama calling me and shit. Talking about Adrian wants to talk to you. I said, I don't want to talk, I don't want to talk to Adrian. Because I already know that he's trying to bring my, he's trying to bring my name up in it because his cousin, because his cousin did it. And they are cousins. There is Willis and Asian Plus. So you said the truth is a blessing in the world here. And we're not there yet. We haven't got to the truth yet. It's the same thing that's happened with the others we talked to. They told us this story, they told us that story, and they finally said, here's your story. Not the third time around. The truth is your best friend. The best thing that ever happened that night at that house was that the one boy that got shot so bad didn't die yet. So we had no homicide charge, it ain't a murder. But it's attempted. It's attempted. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. If it's a murder, if it's a murder, then it's, it's over. Yeah. That's a big charge. Right. I mean, you know, there's no doubt with us, there ain't no doubt with us that, that after all this is over with, that you made contact with a couple of people. You could have picked out a photograph of your lineups of talking about how they caught one of you and you popped it back. You know, you're not going to, why would you stand there and lie to somebody and say you shot at somebody when you didn't? That's crazy. You know, you, you don't talk to people like that. You, you, you know, we'd like to see how someone wants to help yourself out a little bit. You know, I can't help you, and he can't either. 
you know, you have babies, and you just have to make a living for that baby. The best thing to do is get this thing right, get it started, and get it over with. If you can't tell the truth, it ain't going nowhere but, but down. It's time to show the truth for us. Everybody start making out for that. Right, baby, we'll be out. Did that pistol just accidentally go off, or did you mean to pull the trigger? What separates you from some of these people that have been doing these shootings in this county is the fact you get see remorse in your eyes. You got, you got a heart. A lot of people don't have a heart. You got a heart. Am I going to find you on a video surveillance footage at Tom Thumb on Valley Road? Here we go. We're starting going straight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What happened to me? Yeah, yeah. Fuck. Shit. Might as well shit. But I can't. I'm deaf. I can't hear. So y'all, y'all, y'all put something together. Y'all could. I ain't gonna lie, y'all could. Just we're working hard. This has been a nonstop process for us. This y'all, this y'all job. I understand. I'm making it easier for y'all, man. So basically, this boy came over my house. Which boy? Trying to uh, drink up. Trying to buy uh, trying to buy some weed from me. And I told him, I said, I ain't got none. You feel me? I stopped. I stopped selling weed because I got I had two jobs. And so he's like, all right. He's like, shit, I got a lick for you. The, uh, he's like, the net two white boys I stay with. Y'all get a lick on them, they got, they got weed, cards, money, all that. So I was like, okay. You know? So, um, I was like, shoot, where are you at right now? He was like, uh, shit. He was like, where are you at? No, 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 no. He was like, where are you trying right now? I was like, yeah. I was like, we go to an Adrian car, da da, this and that. So I talked to Adrian about it. And I was like, shit, he down. You know what I'm saying? So after that, Adrian, um, Adrian went to my house. You know, we um, we got ready, and then shit, what? How to get? I told him, I said, they don't give it up. Emotional. Coming over there. Who? You, baby. Me, Adrian, Draco, and um, Darius Wilkes. Who? Darius Wilkes. And. Who the driver? Uh, Draco. So. Did you say Draco all over them? Yeah. My driver? Yeah. So that's how he, he go because he knew where to go. Right. Joe Adrian. Where did you fuck, fuck the car at? Um, when you got to I don't even know. You were in the car or what? Uh, uh, I'm saying they brought it. We, we got out. We walked down the road. So you guys uh, stopped in front of the young guy? Yeah, we got out. And, and they were going? They were supposed to be, they were supposed to be, they, like, you know what I'm saying? They were supposed, we supposed to got shit. They were just waiting on y'all. Basically, he was trying to steal the car. Oh, they were trying to steal the car? Yeah. <laughs> Did Adrian know about this father? Did Adrian? Yeah. Yes. Was he an active yeah. participant? Yes, he hopped over the gate with me with the bat. Did he have a mask on? He had a bat? Yes. Did he have a mask on? Did Darius know about the robber? Or was he just riding? He was just riding. He I don't think, well... He knew you Yeah, 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 yeah. He knew this one. Yeah, you know. Come on, man. He knew he was going. Did Drake know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. He knew what he was like, trying to put us on the video. I'm just trying, I'm trying to make sure I keep that, man. Yeah. Where, where did the bat go? I don't know where the bat went. I'm going to be honest with you. Sorry. Y'all, so who went in? Who went? Y'all had Who yeah. went behind the house? You and Adrian? Huh? You said you went behind the house? Huh? No, we jumped the gate. Mm -hmm. We jumped the gate. 
supporting me or whatever y'all got. I'm saying like, y'all, I already know y'all, y'all, y'all been had it since that night. No, not really. Uh, so once y'all jump the gate, you're in the backyard with these guys. What happens? Uh, um, I told him, I said, if y'all don't give it up, I shoot and then Adrian tried to swing at him. And then his other friend tried to came and hit Adrian. And then I shot both of the boys. And then after that, I fled. What was, what was in your mind when you shot him? I don't know. I don't know why I did that. How many times you pulled the trigger? I don't even know. More than two times? Probably. And you shot Adrian? I'm not sure. Yeah? I got a lead right there, was it? Because they were trying to sell that car? I let Adrian, I can't, I went to some y'all, it's someone that came that I went to some dumb. Did you call him anyone from the phone? So you were the one that said two people were shot? Mm-hmm. Okay. <sighs> so was it an immediate remorse kicked in? You were like, like, shit, I gotta, I already talked, when he got hit, I already, like, when he got hit, I was running. He called it to me. I don't know how the fuck he called it to me, but, when he called it to me, he was scared. He was like, he was like, bro, you shot me. I was like, I ain't need to, bro. You feel me? I'm finna go get you help, bro. I'm finna go call the police and shit. You feel me? So that's what I did. So was the car at Tom Thumb? They came to Tom. They came. They came to Tom Thumb, and I told them that Adrian is on the road. Like go pick him up. And I guess they didn't pick him up. They just left him. Or I don't know. Did y'all find him at the scene or some shit? No, it wasn't at the scene. Uh, so you ran all the way to Tom Thumbs? Yes. Do you sell a bike on your way? I ain't charging you with a stolen bike. I ain't yes. worried about no stolen bike right now. Yes. Yes, I did. Okay. Where's that bike at? The bike is, um... I think it's my house. What color is it? Blue. Do you know where you took it from? No, remember? No, well, it was like, it was over there, but I don't even, no, no, it was like, when you go from the park, it's some apartments in the front of the park, and like, it's the last, it's the last turn in on the right, and I got it from the last house on the left, <laughs> two houses down, because I was trying to get him up. Well, so he, he quit running? Uh, you left him behind? No, I didn't leave him like that. You know what I'm saying? I said, I didn't go get a phone. He was out of the Yeah. And so he had to quit running because he was hurt. Right. Did y'all get anything from the house? No, I didn't get anything. You didn't get a little time or nothing? Nothing. 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 That's what I'm saying. It, is that gun going to be somewhere where some kid can get to it? No. Are you willing to tell me where that gun's at? Gun <sighs> is, um, you know where um, Mountain Park is? Mm -hmm. You know, basically it's at Kimani. No, it's at Kimani House, 751 Blakely Avenue. Okay. Who lives there? My friends. So if I got knock on the door and tell him you said the guns are out, he'll, he'll get it for him? Or is he going to no, be out here? It's not he, it's the she, and she won't be like, she won't be like, she don't know what you're talking about, so you're just going to have to search. Unless we take you over there. I mean, you know, I mean, y'all could. Is she going to give us the gun if you're there? I'm pretty sure she would. She's not in trouble. Yeah, I know that. I know that. Okay. Yeah, she don't even know that I put it there. She don't, she don't even... Is know. it in the house? It's like in the shed, in the closet.
So what? So you know, you're gonna take me to the cabin? Oh, well, the one on the yard took you to the cabin. Yeah. Ain't no violence for this shit. Yeah, for experience, man. Right. So you don't get a bond. Hey, yeah, that's something I have to the judge, man. How do you feel about this? Honestly. Stupid as fuck. I should never, I should never win. But you feel me? I, I, I got I got to see, you feel me? One day I got to see, I got to see my man. Yep. That means everything in the world. I swear to God, I like her. I just did so much for her. Cause, like, you feel me? We just got the time. Shout out to that crazy shit. I just, I spent all that shit on her. And then, when I got paid for her, my job, I spent like $400 on her. Yeah, so I mean, you said that, uh, did you say that Adrian swung the bat at these guys? That's why I hit on my accident because as I was supposed to be first, but I didn't see one of them hit on the bat. Is they they were they were going for it. You feel me? So they jumped up to try to fight him back or what? Right. Uh, are they protecting yourself? Basically. Like, I said I was going to shoot him. So they just come from that. You know what I mean? They just come from that reaction. Go on. Put your gun out. They come to that reaction. Like, Hell no. Shit. So you don't feel like you were trying to protect yourself from the trigger, do you? I mean, I would. I mean, I, I don't know, like, I was trying to protect myself and my friend. It wouldn't, it wouldn't have happened if you wouldn't have been there to begin with. You right. You right. She's been honest with you. Yeah, you right. But she asked me a question, so I answered. Anything you wanted to tell them, guys? <clears throat> the one that you shot. Same thing you wanted to tell them? So, man. Sorry, and, and, and that shit, that shit would know me. Shit. You want some water? Maybe. <laughs> okay, I'm smart. Yes. I can't see my, I can't see my false name before I go in this bitch. You can't see what? It's my baby. What was you looking at with this other charge? What were they going to do for jump probation? This should be shit, probably, but I don't, I, I don't care. Like, I just still, it's still bad. Like, I might not get to see, like, see that for years. And I don't see that. Like, I've been telling my baby mom, like, I'm finna go to court. I don't know what these guys are finna do. Can I see her? I only kept her one day. And I can see her in five days. This little girl. <laughs> the kids are melting hot, man. Sorry, I'm going to be here. No, not this afternoon. No, no. We can't do that. My mom, I can't talk, I can't call them nothing. I can't talk to my mom. 
I don't mind. I mean, listen, I don't mind at all. And, and neither is Mr. Tingle letting the prosecutor know that you work with us, that you cooperate with us. You know, especially getting this gun off the street. We don't need that gun out there. You know, you're doing the right thing there. So, can, you, can I at least call my mom, please? Yeah, I'll let you call her, man. I'll let, I'll let you call her. <laughs> sure. I'll make sure Mr. T will finish with what we're doing here, okay? All right. <clears throat> Tell me, who, who have you told about this? Yeah. I, I, I want to talk. I just want to talk. You want to talk to your mama? I will let you talk to Mel in a minute. We we'll, we'll have to finish this up. All right. Who else have you told me beside Adrian's mama? My baby's mama? Uh, What's her name? Yolani? Frederick? That's it, that's, that's all it, 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 it came from, you feel me, it came from her, and she started telling people. Did you talk to uh, Adrian Sender? Yeah, when he pulled up. Did you tell him kind of what happened, but not the full? You're right. Just. Shifting gears for a minute. Um, Cause right now, everybody in your mom's house is outside pending the search one on her house. Is there a gun in that garage? I pulled the magazine off you. I'm, I'm about to do a search one, man. Yeah, so I'm gonna find it anyways. It's in there. Where'd you hide it at? In, in uh... So it's not on Benjamin Street? No. It, it's no, 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 no. That's, no, the street that I live for is by that. It's by that. That's what I'm saying. But... Yes, there is in a uh, it's in a big it's in a big white dryer. Big white dryer. Is that the gun that was using this robber? Yes. Yeah, I got that. Yeah, I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you, man. I, I've you may not recognize me. I look I look different than I did when I was on patrol when I dealt with you were a kid. Yeah, you got shit running over your head right now. Excuse my language. You're you're running. I'm running. I'm going to be straight with you. You gotta find more change, man. Let me ask you about that tattoo on your chest. Oh no, no, this is looking gang shit. That that ain't. I don't know what to do or anything like that. But I swear to God, I I have to ask. I swear to God, cause cause niggas ain't trying to kill me about that shit. No, I just got it on my chest. Oh, you're not an LOB? No, I'm not. Was anybody in that car associated with gangs? Uh, no. No. Where, where can I find Darius Wilkes at? I don't know. <laughs> I'm beyond be with you. I don't know. I swear to God. Is he running right now? Because he, he posted a cryptic text by crashing on Facebook. Not, not cryptic. too long ago. Cryptic text. A message that was kind of weird. Oh, uh, uh, and some place. Place. No, just, just on Facebook. He just said, my crash is you. Why are you leaving? Shit. I guess he lived. I guess he lived. I don't know where he at. So. You got anything else? Do you feel like we treated you fair? I mean, yeah. I just, I just like, wait, what? Do you feel like we? Do you feel like we pressured you or threatened you to talk to us today? No, sir. Really? Are you sure about him? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Raise your right hand. You swear in front of the statement you give us is the truth, the best of your knowledge? Yes, sir. Okay. Alright, right now the charges that sit on you for the warrant part is attempted murder, um, robbery with a firearm, and found in possession of a firearm. Okay. Attempted murder? 
and widows, attempted murder, robbery of the firearm. And I think, I mean, I, I, you, went, you, went in to, you went in to rob them of money uh, and, and drugs. But I didn't take anything. But you attempted to do that. Uh -huh. And you're being charged with felon in possession of a firearm. I, I'm, I'm going to shoot straight with you. You did get an additional charge today. You are going to be placed under arrest for that as well, and that's okay. another felon in possession. Possession? Possession of that ammo that we got off you? Uh, Dogs can't possess ammunition, firearms can steal weapons. Yeah. Okay. Alright. Anything else? First, I'm going to get two people. Yeah. What did you call? And if you want to help him with that real quick, I'm going to get Officer Swimming. You have a phone that you can call off of. Mm -hmm. You have a phone you can call off of real quick. Oh, what? A phone you can call off of? How did you find it? Alright. Officer Swimming. Yes. And was he successful with that? Yes. Or I believe so. I, I was out of the room. I, I can't. Oh, is that, are we finished with the, the, the video there? Uh, I am, Judge. Yes, sir. Um, and where was this interview taken? The Crestview Police Department. And when um, did you do an interview with Adrian English? DeAndre? Uh, DeAndre, I'm sorry. Yes. DeAndre English, yes. Um, was it a non custodial interview? Uh, there were actually two. And how did you get DeAndre English's name? So the night of the incident, our K-9 division did a track that ended over 507 South Lincoln Street. Uh, an individual by the name of Dion Hayes was uh, briefly detained for an interview. Uh, he was deemed not a part of the incident, uh, but I know he knew i know he has knowledge of a lot of people so i asked him if he knew a draco and he said yeah he works at the tire shop next to uh tom thumb did you follow up on that information yes how did you do that i responded over uh either a day or two later um made contact with the manager the manager i asked if there was somebody by the name of draco that worked there uh, and he showed me the employee file with a blown up version of a driver's license for deandre english and you recognize the person who was in that driver's license photo? Yes, and the address. What was the address? 1638 East 1st Avenue. And is that the address of the shooting? Yes. Uh, did DeAndre English tell you whether or not that was his address? I don't recall. I, I know in one of the accounts I had when he was picked up on his warrant, he said, but I live here. And where were and you? that was at 1638 East First Avenue. Did you find out that DeAndre English was on probation at the time? Yes. Um, did you find out whether Adrian Bloodsworth's vehicle was recovered? Uh, it was recovered prior to my arrival on scene the night of the incident. And do you know where it was recovered? I don't know the exact address. Did you search that vehicle? I did. And how, how were you able to search it? Uh, at the time, Adrian was a victim. There, uh, we hadn't had any other information to say that he actively knew of the robbery and he provided consent. And did you find any evidence in the vehicle? Uh, inside the vehicle, we found Jeremiah Haynes Ashton's uh, driver's license in the passenger side front. Now, on the video, Jeremiah Haynes Ashton says um, that Draco told them that there was money in carts. What are carts? Uh, THC cartridges. They're for vapes. It's uh, THC vapes. 
And were those items found at the residence? Yes. And where was the money found? The money was found on the back porch inside of uh, Jonathan Johnson's wallet. After the interview at the Crestview Police Department of Jeremiah, uh, did you take him to another location? Yes. Why did uh, you do that? To get clarification on where the firearm was that he admitted to being in the garage, uh, we relocated and he offered to show us where it was at. Um, when we arrived, his mother signed a consent to search form for the garage allowing us to go in. And did Jeremiah show you where it was at? Yes. Did you recover the firearm that was used in this incident based on Jeremiah telling you where it was? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma'am. No objection, Judge. Without objection, portal and mid states exhibit five. Uh, it is an image from my body worn camera. Um, and it's looking down at a storage compartment underneath a stand up front load dryer. Um, and there is a fire or a black firearm. Any other questions? Also for the defense. Um, Investigator Tingle, um, you had consent from Mr. Bloodsworth to search the vehicle in question? Yes, sir. Um, you mentioned finding an ID pertaining to Mr. Haynes. Um, what else did you find within the vehicle? Uh, there were some soda cans, soda bottles, or sorry, soda bottles, water bottles, cans. L allow me to rephrase. Did you find anything else of ev evidentiary value in the vehicle? Uh, not to my recollection. Okay. Um, did you find any fingerprints belonging to my client in the vehicle? Uh, not fingerprints, but DNA was collected. Okay. Did you find some DNA belonging to my client in the vehicle? Uh, I have not received an FDLE lab report stating that there was. Um, with respect to the scene in question, um, the backyard, um, are there any surveillance cameras in the area or anything of that nature? None that we could find for the time of the incident. Um, so to your knowledge, there's no surveillance video or anything placing my client at the scene? No, sir. Uh, to your knowledge, other than Mr. Haynes and Mr. Bloodsworth, are there any individuals placing my client at the scene? Any other witnesses? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, are there any, um, to your knowledge, physical evidence placing my client in the backyard um, at the time of this incident? Not in the backyard. No. Okay. Um, I'm assuming that there are some shell casings from the, the firearm that, that was fired. Um, were there any DNA or fingerprints associated with my clients on those shell casings? I believe they were sent off, but I have not received a lab report yet. Okay. <clears throat> Other than the testimony and the statements of Mr. Bloodsworth and Mr. Haynes, is there any evidence placing my client at the scene? No. When you did you conduct an interview of, of Mr. Bloodsworth, or was that the other investigator? I, I conducted uh, I conducted an interview with him either a day or two later while he was still in the hospital. Okay. 
And his, would it be fair to say that his story changed or evolved? Yes. Okay. And, and the same with the video that we just watched of Mr. Haynes, his story evolved during that time frame as well. Right. In fact, initially he indicated, Mr. Haynes indicated that he didn't even go. Right. And just to recap, um, to the best of your knowledge, is there any physical evidence corroborating what Mr. Haynes and Mr. Bloodsworth have told law enforcement? Pending lab reports, no. No further questions. Uh, Investigator Tingle, you spoke with Mr. English about the about DNA in the vehicle. Is that right? Correct. And um, did he give you any kind of statement about whether or not his DNA may be in the vehicle? Uh, he quickly told me that he has worked on the vehicle before. So, if you'd gotten DNA results back showing him in the vehicle, that would have just corroborated his statement. And was there ever any evidence that either Mr. Haynes Ashton or Mr. Bloodsworth um, had any other way other than Mr. English of knowing what would be at the residence that he lived at? No. Um, or what, or connecting them to the victims and what they would be able to find? Uh, there was no other nexus that we know of. No further questions. Do you need to stay around? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Just hang with us just a little longer. Thank you. At this time, the state rests. If I may have one moment, Judge. You may.
Defense wish to make the court. Yes, Judge, please. Um, Your Honor, I understand why the state has chosen to go forward on the evidentiary hearing with respect to this violation of probation. There is a lesser evidentiary burden. It's easier for the state to win. Um, I understand the logic behind that. Um, however, that being said, it is still incumbent upon the state to meet that burden. Um, in this particular case, the testimony that the state is reliant upon is from Mr. Bloodsworth and Mr. Haynes. Investigator Tingle testified today that there is no physical evidence linking my client to these allegations. If you look at the violation report on his violation of probation, um, the basis for the violation of probation stem solely from this charge, that's this new law violation. Um, there's no technical violation, no dirty UA, nothing. It's just this new law charge. Um, we haven't heard any account from anyone indicating that he was doing poorly on probation. But for this charge, he would not have had his probation violated. Um, not too long ago, law enforcement, if they smell the odor of marijuana, they could use as the basis of probable cause to search the vehicle, or at least at a minimum, um, reasonable suspicion that there's criminal activity afoot. With the advent of medical marijuana, that necessarily had to change. Um, there was an ad hoc kind of informal policy of plus one, meaning that if you smell the odor of marijuana, um, now with the advent of medical marijuana, what's the plus one? What else is there to substantiate a basis for a probable cause search of a vehicle? Um, a lot of times that would be that the suspect make a statement saying that they didn't have a valid um, registration for medical marijuana or were there narcotics in plain view or something to that effect, but that was in addition to the odor of medical, uh, medical marijuana. Um, it's not entirely analogous to this situation, Judge, but what I'm saying to the court is there is nothing in addition to these statements from Mr. Haynes and Mr. Bloodsworth that corroborate their story. They've made some statements and with respect to Mr. Bloodsworth, he's anticipating a positive benefit for doing so. Um, at issue is whether or not the judge should find their statements credible. Let me talk about Mr. Bloodsworth's testimony here today. He indicated he did not have a gun. Um, I, I asked him that point blank. Both, Mr., um, both of the victims in this case, both testified that there were two guns. That was very clear. Um, Mr. Bloodsworth's testimony today is that he did not have a gun. Um, in fact, he was unarmed. But his co-defendant, Mr. Haynes, in the statement, indicated that there was a bat present. All these stories don't reconcile. Mr. Bloodsworth, when I advised him of the fact that I had taken his deposition, he indicated to the court that he had, had presented to law enforcement with one initial story, subsequently changed it, and at his deposition, that was the third version of events. It's not in question that he lied. It's just a question of at what point do we believe that the story is real and which story? Likewise with Mr. Haynes. We saw him on video change his story. All I'm asking is for the court to take into consideration that there is no physical evidence corroborating any of these statements from individuals whose story has changed. Their credibility is in question. Their motivation is in question. They're anticipating the positive benefit in return for this. Um, this is not a, a game of clue where you can say that um, if you're caught with someone, you can just point and say that oh, it was Jonathan on the grassy knoll and he had the shot that killed JFK. There has to be something substantive to corroborate that allegation. And at this point, there is nothing. That's not me saying that, Judge. That's Investigator Tingle. Um, accordingly, I would ask this court to uh, 
dismiss the violation of probation at this time. Court, having heard the testimony here today, as well as the admitted evidence that was set before set before the court, uh, based on the requirement of the preponderance of the evidence, which the defense counsel and state both reference, is substantially less than the beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, standard that we have on criminal trials in this case the court will acknowledge that there were some differences of testimony uh, throughout the day there may even have been some different motivations however two things one is the general facts of this case all line up they are very consistent and the court while there's no corroborating evidence the court has to then look toward testimonial evidence and determine credibility and the court finds that the witnesses were credible and the court is also persuaded by the fact that there was no countervailing testimony otherwise only trying to call into question the testimony of the state who have the burden to prove by a preponderance. So the court does find that the state has proved its case uh, and finds that there is a violation of probation uh, based upon the new law offense and finds so by a preponderance of the evidence. Your Honor, if I may, um, I would ask to defer sentencing in this particular matter. Um, we're anticipating proceeding forward to trial this cycle um, on the substantive uh, new law allegations, and um, I would ask to defer sentencing until after that occurs. Amen. Your Honor, I think the court has heard the evidence and it's fresh right now. I, I don't know that there's a point in deferring sentencing other than do we have a score sheet based upon I, w I, I wasn't actually planning on sentencing today in, in that vein judge we yeah, I, I think I think he has a right to bring in other issues I mean depending on, I don't know what the state's requesting but I assume like the state's requesting a, a, a DOC sentence he has a right to Yes, bring sir, in other have, issues based upon you know before we sentence yes sir and we would anticipate providing mitigating evidence at, at a sentencing yeah I, I wasn't planning on doing it today yes sir, yes, sir. Do we normally do you normally do it immediately after a, a violation just depends yeah this this is um this case both um certainly the new law charge is uh, a very significant uh charge and comes into play will we'll come into play on the sentencing the fact that the violation was such a serious violation even though there hasn't been a trial on the underlying charge um, I assume that's what you're getting at. Um, so when do when does the state what, what are you thinking about as far as sentencing I mean, you, uh, Mr. Harper, you're, you're saying that you believe the, the underlying charge, you're anticipating it going forward on this cycle? Yes, Judge. We wouldn't ask to defer sentencing for an extended period just until we can have the opportunity to go to a jury trial on his new charge. Um, and I'm not anticipating continuing um, the new charge, and I'd like to leave it set for um, the pretrial conference that's coming up, I believe, next week. The state looking to uh, proceed 
to trial this cycle, which I mean, I'm, I'm good. Um, yes, sir, I think it's going to be handled by another prosecutor. So, um, you're all I got today, so yes, sir, I'm. <laughs> Not um, to put uh, pressure on her, but we can yeah, address no. that at the pretrial conference. Well, I, I understand that. Yes, sir. I, I've, I've I'm just trying to figure out as far as just sentencing, that's all we're really dealing with uh, today. Um, can we set it for just the next miscellaneous date um, for a sentencing hearing? And then if something happens, we're all is able to record before that, then... Well, we have we have a fairly short order. We've got an April 28th miscellaneous. The next one is May 26th. Um, that'd be fine with the state judge. May okay. 26th. May 26th in the afternoon. I'm sorry. Is that at 2 p.m. on the phone? Yes, that would be at 2 p.m.